cut to the feature discussion as soon as possible. Matt, jump ahead. We got two feature discussion. Choose the one you want to discuss before you leave. Oh my god. And then okay. we'll try to squeeze another one. That's your, your, that's your homework, and then you can just talk about it on the Google thing. All right. I have a feeling I know which one you're going to prefer to talk about. One's okay. more of a rant. Where do, where, okay, where do I find my two choices? I'm starting. Now, this is for when I have to leave. I'm going to let you know, right? Yogi, well, you we can clip off the of... first whatever, oh, gotcha. okay. you know, the first five minutes of it. So I've already started, so whenever you guys are ready. Okay. You already, you already started. He's going to give me more editing work to do. All right, so count us, count us in, OB. Like, count us in with vocally, and then tell us to stop talking so when the music's playing. And then, but, uh, yeah, my, it's, it's the two, it says feature. Two of them, actually, one is a quickie, but it could be made into a feature. It's more of a rant than anything mm-hmm. else. Cool beans. So this isn't a video podcast then right now, or is it? Yeah, Are it is. doing the thing yeah. on Twitch? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the, what's the link to Twitch again? Twitch.tv forward slash OB1X2. Get some kick-ass uh, butt rock. That dot OB1. OB1. What's that? Ob one X X two X deuce X deuce drop an X deuce. All right, so Matt could only stay with us to like twelve twelve fifteen. Okay, All right. that's good. That's a long time. That's an hour of it. Yeah, that's why I want to make sure you join us for at least one feature when the special music. Music. All the dates are right, right? Wait, I've just started. And welcome back. This is... Horseplay. I didn't count down either. Yeah, so we'll count. start over. And welcome back. This is... Horseplay! Welcome back, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is Horseplay, episode 17th, April 10th, 2014. We'll get right into that. As you guys see right here, we have Mr. McFly right beside me. And beside him, my co-host, cohort, and the man that always gets me in trouble, Yogi Zilla. I was going to call him Yogi One again. I don't know why, but I just did. Hey guys, what's going on? The title of today's show is Let's Move to Canada for Hearthstone. For Hearthstone. Just for Hearthstone. Anything else is okay. What's, what's the context behind that? You can't get Hearthstone in your ghettoville? No, we have Hearthstone, but we want Hearthstone on these things. Oh, so the portable version <laughs> and, rolled out in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 spoiler! Spoiler for our own show. We're gonna get into that in the news. I'm sorry. Rigid. Good I'm sorry. Sorry. Rigid. Hey. Well, okay, first. <laughs> I'm not gonna derail. I'm not derailing, but I'm asking the Twitch, the Twitch address for your listeners, because I can't seem to get onto it. So if I'm a listener, how do I watch this on Twitch TV right now? <laughs> Twitch.tv. Yeah. Forward slash ob one. The one. The 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 word one. Oh, the X, word one. Yes, X okay. two. Okay, O B I O N E X two. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Horseplay Live, which today is the derailment uh, spectacular. Because every time we got Matt, he's like, "Yeah, let's find a way to get it off the rails." <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, no, that's his goal every playing. time. League of Legends. It <laughs> says playing some league. I have no idea what I'm doing. That you don't. I know. It's okay. We all know Wait. that. Oh, that's... there we are. Oh, no, there's Do- Zoe Deschanel. Is that Zoe Deschanel? You have oh, no, that's Obi right. has Oe- Zoe. Obi has Zoe as as a stand-in. That's that's very effective. You, your Twitch followership will go up very fast that way. <laughs> that's all you gotta do to really be popular on Twitch is just show some cleavage. Oh, I guess it's just okay. Not... Female cleavage. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Damn. And move back I, out. Saw I saw a nip. Oh, okay, there we go. I got, I'm gonna shut up now. All right, do your thing. I can drink off camera. <laughs> All right, so you can trick a camera. This is not, this is rated explicit. We're, we, we're not pulling any punches. We're rated R, baby. Just think about it as VGO without the interruptions of the guitar. Oh, that's nice. Uh, John hasn't done that in a while, so 
Yeah, he has, yeah, he has been good about that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I actually hey, kinda... Sorry, you were saying, Yogi, about uh, something. So, yeah, uh, today's a special show because we're officially, officially on all games. Uh, as, as long as uh, everybody shows support. So, I might as well just put that out, you know, the cat's out of the bag. We're on allgames.com. <laughs> so we're part of your family over there with zombie cast and video game outsides and all that. And I think we were supposed to be on the 5 p.m. slot, but apparently we got voted up. We got put it to prime time, 7 p.m., right before B team. Hey, hi, hi. So, so how is that possible? Wait, we're, okay, I'm, I'm dumb, first of all. But we're recording at 11 o'clock right now. Is it next show at 7 o'clock, or is it just not a live show at 7 o'clock? Yeah, it's going to be archives, because there's no way. Well, actually, oh, okay. we, cannot, we might be able to swing 7 p.m. Originally, it was supposed to be 5 p.m., and by the way, I just want to give a quick apology to the uh, All Games Network community. Uh, well, a, more of a disclaimer. I had nothing to do with the running into and running over on our show and taking time out of the PAX East coverage. We had nothing to do with that. Everybody's playing Yogi, Yogi, Yogi's behind it. I see him in the chat. Like, I, I'm getting nasty grams from Chip Sella like, on, face, on yeah. Facebook. He's like, dude, cut off the stream now. And I'm like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> were they even were like... they getting? Were they really getting that worked up about it? Really? <laughs> no, but he did write the word "now" in all caps, so I was like, "Whoa!" Well, what what did they have to cut in with? Like what nachos they ate at the Pax uh, <laughs> convenience store? Actually, I'm jealous. There's a lot of people at Pax. There's uh, Chris Gannon from uh, Gamer Death Podcast. No, Gamer Life, Gamer Death. There's a lot of uh, all games people at uh, Pax right now. Yes, yes. You can just <laughs> celebrate that. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you guys to keep going. We're just gonna slowly start the show today. No, we're good. We're good. Oh, we Sorry, are. Okay. No. Well, yeah. No, not you. Um. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you great. You sound sexy. Am I? Also, you, buddy. I Maybe we can share a room together. My game is not up. I'm just naturally hey. loud, louder hey. than people. I mean, room. Matt. Whatever you want to do, bud. I mean, I grew a ginger beard for you. I know you did. I saw that. Yeah, I I grew I grew a man's beard for you. (laughs) I can't help it comes in red. That's my curse. That's what I'm born with. I'm trying my best here. (laughs) Well, quick fun fact. Remember we did a little thing, fun facts. We all shared things about each other. One thing that's weird about me is whenever I just you know get lazy and don't feel like shaving, I get random like patches of red hair and blonde hair. It's like what the hell. Of course, I have a lot more gray hair than anything else. That's, I guess it's old age. My hair doesn't know what it wants to do now. Part of your face is soulless, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. But anyway, let's get keep going with this, guys. We are on All Games. You guys did hear that. We are very, very thankful for that because uh, they're giving us a shot, and we're going to give it to them. We're going to give it to them right. We're going to give it to them right now. You guys can tweet us throughout the show right here, Obi1X2, at Matto McFly. I do. I will say motto because I'll say it later. But and at Yogizilla uh, on Twitter, you guys can hit us up. We will answer. And of course, up there at top, right above Yogi's and Matt's head, you guys see a voicemail two zero six four one five four nine eight seven. You guys want to call in? Give us a voicemail. We'll play that live right here tonight. So, like I said, the title is "Let's um, Move to Canada" for Hearthstone. For Hearthstone. Not, not, so good, not so good. I like the dramatic pause. That's good. Yeah. Now, now I knew you were gonna. I, technically savvy. Right. <laughs> but could you could you not make it so that your phone thinks it's in Canada? Is there not some? Oh, that... see, he's so, giving the spoilers. He's just oh, about sorry. to get into that. See. So I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Hey, you. Matt. I think I'm getting in trouble That's a very too, good man. Point. That's a very good point, though. Matt. <laughs> Drinking up, Matt. I'm I, I'll get in trouble too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let Yogi open the show because we're spoiling everything in the first five minutes. Yeah, I am sorry. I'm gonna see. I put together all these show notes so we're structured and all our guests and That's your first mistake putting together show notes. <laughs> you know they can know having a fee, a feel. And Matt's no not new to this. He knows our format. We start off with introductions and just casual chat. How you doing? What you would, what you've been doing? You said I was on a time restriction, so I'm going. You love your cardigan, you know, whatever. You look like Mr. Rogers, that, that kind of stuff. And then we go into the obligatory news. But anyway, so yes, uh, don't forget. Uh, besides uh, Twitter, which you can reach us at ob one x two, Yogizilla, Geeky Antics, and Matt O'McFly. That's for Matt Bradford over there. 
the man, the man himself. We love him. He's a pain in our ads, but we love having him here. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I'm pointing according to Skype. I'm not looking at the Twitch because too much going on. My brain goes. And also uh, the voicemail. Yeah, two zero six four one five four nine eight seven. Probably won't have much time to play the voicemails today, but when we have uh, a quiet time and we don't have a guest, we'll likely play a lot of the voicemails. So we'll see if we get to them today, but we will play play them and then uh, <laughs> respond to them during the show. Again, 206-415-497. And we're part of the All Games uh, family. It is a test run, so support us. Go over to allgames.com and go hang out in the chat. I recommend don't use the, the web app. Actually use the IRC client and, and just hang out in the chat. Don't just pop in and just hang out there. And they'll be like, who are you? I'm a horseplay fan. You got to keep the show on. Keep the dream alive. <laughs> just saying. And okay. And if you're not into voicemail, you don't want us to hear your voice or whatever, you can email us too. That, that's the thing too still. Uh, that's geekyantics at gmail.com. And our website is now simply just geekyantics.net. Super easy. <laughs> so yes. Um, I agree. To, to, to elaborate... Right now, due to the logistics, we will not be live on all games. You'll be listening to previous episodes. So tonight, I believe they played episodes 16 at 7 o'clock. A little after 7. They were running a little late. And next week, they'll play this episode, which you, the guys that are here on Twitch are seeing live. It's going to be a little confusing because we're going to be serving two audiences. But eventually, we'll do it so that will be actually live on all games. But again, it is a t- test run to see if there's a demand there. And a little anecdote. <laughs> Derek was giving us a hard time. He said, you know, every every podcast out there about gaming is uh, just a bunch of guys in a room talking about whatever. I'm like, is that a bad thing? That's kind of the idea. We're in three rooms, A. Ah. And we're men. We're not guys. Mm. And we're interesting. And we all have beards. One of them's Ginger. Uh, Obi's got a cool hat. Mm-hmm. And we got videos. So it's not just your regular video show. You guys are going to rock it on all games, I think. You guys are, you guys are going to be right at home. That's it. We got the official. We're going to make that into a, we gotta make it to a bumper. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, no, I, I guess. So funny. Not so, so... If I could hug you guys right now, I would. Probably not. Dude, Walker oh, Stalker Talk. Ta- Con, we definitely gotta make arrangements to get together. That'd be awesome. I know, I know you you may not be able to make it either, but I almost have no I, excuse. I'm in Georgia. I no, I'm um, right now. I'm pretty much on board for Walker Stalker Con, and uh, not to sound too pluggy, but yeah, that's the thing that Zcast is gonna go to. Oh yeah, uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of cool people coming down. We got yourself, I think. We got uh, Tim uh, Tim Curtis, maybe Obi. If you get on over there, no. Obi, yeah, yeah. Shifty eyes, shifty eyes, McGee over there. No, I'm 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 trying to fix technical issues because people are saying they can't hear certain people. I'm trying to fix it on my end. So sorry about that. Yes, I will definitely try to get into. What are we talking about again? <laughs> Walker best. Stalker Con, you know the zombie fest. A lot of wa- the Walking Dead, but it's not just the Walking Dead. It's, that's that's the, like the nucleus, but it's just anything zombie and even horror that people get to get. Yeah, it's actually. You know what? I'm more excited for just the seeing the Zcast crew and uh, any of the listeners. I think it's gonna be a fun time. Yeah. I, uh, and where is this? That's what I'm excited about. <laughs> and where is I'm it? I'm excited to turn my. It's in Atlanta, just at, right downtown Atlanta, in the Westin Hotel. Yeah, I wish I could, man. But you're yeah. banned for Atlanta. Yeah. The tr- I don't want to talk about is it. Is that he's gonna be playing golf? Oh, so that was, a, <laughs> that was originally our, our that was a, our original original show yeah. title, the golf not a real sport. <laughs> but then Obi got upset. Said, "All right, I respect your beliefs, dude." Well, I don't think we're even gonna talk about that. But I'm, I am gonna say I am annoyed by the traffic that's caused by Masters Week because I'm in Augusta, Georgia, the the home of golf essentially, and mm-hmm. and it's just a bunch of snooty people with nothing better to do than watch people hitting balls with a stick, you know. And then just taking everybody's parking spots and not knowing how to drive and causing all kinds of jams and it upsets me. Damn but man. it's a good it's a good it's a good business opportunity because if you have like a nice house and you go out of town, people rent out their houses for like ten K a week, fifteen K a week, twenty K a week. I mean it's crazy. <laughs> do it up. Why didn't you do that? Wow. 
I'm not, I'm not quite in that position yet. <laughs> and I would tell you, I'm weird about that. I would like to have another house that I don't live in that I can rent out and then kick people out of it for that Masters week. I don't want people touching my stuff. Just like golf people... fans, what are they going to do? Go to bed at 7 o'clock and maybe like drink your milk? Yeah, they're golf yes. fans. I, Get it. I, I'm, I'm anal. Yeah, dude, I'm going to have to like... It. I'll take a black light and start waving <laughs> over everything. I'm like, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's let's pretend if you didn't do that now, it wouldn't be a bad situation. <laughs> well, you know, I do have plans to do that, and so probably next time. I'm not, not, definitely not this time. It's a little late. You got to plan ahead for that stuff. I mean, they start hiring for the event back in like uh, October, and it's a and it starts in April. You know, mm. so everybody's making the ranges well before that to you know do all that stuff. People have shuttle buses if they have if they have, if they have a van, they do shuttles. You know. It's crazy. It's a lot, a lot of money to be made. Waitresses. Like... This. It, it's nuts. That's There's something a... matters. I avoid se- certain streets during this time because it's if you want to get somewhere and it usually takes uh, ten minutes, it's gonna take about forty five minutes an hour. You know, it's like dr- being back in New York City. No, thank you. It's a nightmare, man. I don't know how you're doing it, <laughs> dude. I don't uh, know how you're doing it either, but take one step at a time. I know. Good for you, buddy. If you guys ever, if you guys ever driven through Washington D.C., you know what I'm talking about. Gridlock traffic in Washington D.C. is insane. It's... Oh, speaking of one step at a time. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> no, no. I am going to be climbing the CN Tower in uh, the first weekend of May for the WWF Foundation fundraiser. So, uh, if you want to donate money to my cause, go to wwfsomethingorother.com and look for Matt Bradford. I could get the real link, but I don't know. Yeah. WWF or WWE? Uh, it's not a wrestling foundation. Oh, okay. Uh, I was like, wait. Life. You <laughs> said... Du- Sorry. No. See, that's the thing. I'm going to say that at I first, uh, I, I got very pissed off about how the, the WWE was forced to change their name because WWF had that name first. But no one called the you know World Wildlife Foundation the WWF. No one called it that. That was WWF was always wrestling. You know, that was, mm-hmm. that was so, and then WWE. I think that's part of the reason I kind of fell out of grace with wrestling. It just it never really clicked with me. WWE it doesn't sound as good. WWF is like yeah, it's like almost like WTF. You know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Matt, since you're not gonna be here for the whole show, just, you know, you already gave a plug. Give us a. You have any other plugs, real quick? Where where, where yeah, we can so find you? No, I just I, you know that's that's a good cause, and uh, so I just wanted to put it out there. No, no, no! I wasn't saying that. Uh, I wasn't trying to be uh, facetious or anything. You have anything else to plug? I'm trying to do something good in this world, and you just shoot me down like that. No, I think that's great. It's awesome. When the guys at uh, 42 level one were doing, uh, what was it called, extra life or something like that? That that, that one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I supported it. Oh, by, by the way, yeah, Ali actually already uh, donated a little bit of money. That guy's a cool cat. Ali and uh, the team at level 40. I'm going to plug them because they're cool cats. Like you guys. You guys are also cool. A lot of cool cats on the All Games Network. Oh, yeah. Cats. Hopefully we stay as part of the family. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, don't, I think you have to screw up. Pretty... Guys, you've heard VGO. You, you've heard the things John sings. It takes a lot to get kicked off the All Games. <laughs> yeah, especially with, with Negro Lover. Holy Hannah. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I, I don't want to get into that. that was like the theme song. Like, okay, well... By the way, moving yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to speed things up. We're gonna have, um, okay, what's going on? Obi's having some technical issues over there. I I don't know if the audio is uh, the audio sounds perfect to me. What I could do, see, I hear Matt just fine. I think uh, mm. so. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing. I have a feeling I this is gonna be the episode. I think on your side, Obi, the audio is messed up. So what I usually do, I take the audio tracks from my recording, and then I just super impose them and start comp- compressing them and all this crazy stuff. Podcast behind the scenes. We just broke the fourth wall. That's a, that's oh. a bad, that's bad. You can't do that. Oh, right. So we're going to try to speed it through. Uh, we're already like 20 minutes in. and We're going to try to speed it through the news. We're going to have a little news abrevious. And uh, while OB goes in mad scientist lab, you can drink on the camera, man. Does it matter? I was about to drink tonight. I actually didn't. <laughs> I'm having one beer. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock. This is usually a time where I'm getting ready to watch some Jimmy Fallon, maybe playing some video games. This is my, like, my brain shutting down type of night. Well, this is a perfect show to be on, then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why you guys get derailing, Matt. 
All right, so yeah, this is our news of Brevis. We'll try to speed through it real quick, and then we got a quick discussion coming up about just kind of talking a little bit about The Walking Dead and some other shows and whatnot. And then uh, we'll have two feature discussions, but Matt's going to choose the one that we're going to focus on first before he has to bail on us. That's how we're going to do it this time, switching things up a little bit. All right, so let's go to the news. You want to do the news, Obi, or or shall I? No, go ahead, man. I'm still trying to figure out ways to turn you down and not Matt because, I, yeah, anyway. The so, news! Here we go. <laughs> that was, you know, dude, do, do that again. Yeah. Wait, I, yeah. Watched, I knew Loon Call. Just hold up. Just hold up. Okay, work up. <laughs> God damn, wake up. Okay, one sec. I'm gonna practice this. Just do your news. <laughs> this can't, is good. This is good I can't do my news. Yeah, this is a good video. Yeah, we're we're listening. Huh? Get the harmonica. Me, I can't the harmonica. What is it supposedly? Not supposed to be. Zoom call. Oh, obligatory news. We're gonna try a little okay. to have a little news. Uh, we. I don't know what that means right there. So today, we're going to chat with Matt. Moto? More? Moto. Cat and Fox over at allgames.com report that Sword Art Online Season 2 goes live in July. I don't necessarily know what Sword Art Online is. I'm probably <laughs> going to get yelled at that when I hear about well, how we done for this week Can, does anybody want to give me some insight on what's going on here I have no idea I'm lost but I, I, <gasps> yes I'm not the only one I, I, first of all I, I moved the <laughs> mic I realized I'm a very loud Puerto Rican so I moved the mic away from my mouth to offset the technical issues. is that better am I more balanced with Matt I almost straight up called you a Mexican for a second ago is that better yes that it better? is that's a lot better oh, there all right. Tiger so, is saying everyone comes out in stereo except the one. Per- I don't care. Anyway, it's, so, still, it's a good observation, but I, I, I thought it was. Everybody comes out in stereo except for who? I, I don't know. Mm. All right. Well, not even in the chat with everybody. That's what, that's what I forgot to do is go in the chat chat. I knew I missed stuff. Anyway, so oh, I don't know. Wow. Like, uh, like um, you ever seen Dot Hack? Or, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, it's an anime like, like Dot Hack. Or um, if you want to take it to like an old school show, full time or full time, when a guy would go into another virtual reality and immerse himself in that world mm-hmm. from full time. Nobody remember the full time. Mm-hmm. Remember Dot Hack? That was a, like a huge series of video games, wasn't it? It was like a faux MMO. It was a single yeah. player that made you think you were in an MMO. So that's what Sword Art Online is like. That someone, uh, a guy creates a, a MMO and people actually get transferred into it, but then suddenly people start actually dying in the in the game. But it's more so. I don't want to say more, much more than that. But they're coming back for another season, and I don't know how they could stretch the show out because I thought it was kind of like a one and done kind of thing. It was a great show though. But, it's kind of uh, like it's kind of like the show Guild. Okay. I love the Guild. I love it too. That's the only yeah. problem. <laughs> they need more. The, the Guild is different though because that's a hilarious show and it's a comedy, so you can do a lot of stuff. It's and about it's World about of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, and well, unofficially. Unofficially, yeah. But it's more about the lifestyle of people that play those kind of games, you know, and what happens behind the scenes, which is that, that's what makes it awesome. But uh, actually, I got some related news about that coming up. But what, what's interesting about, you know, they, they have news about Sword Art Online coming back, you know, season two, but no word on Attack on Titans. And I have a, a piece coming out on Kiki Antics blog that you guys got to check out. It's kind of like a newbie guide to anime. So, like, if you've been out of the scene for a long time and you've never got into it, I'm going to share a few good ones that I think are must-sees and that mostly everybody will, will, will appreciate. So that's going to be a little thing I'm going to do. Attack on Titans is one of those, but it's another show that's been on, on hiatus. And one of the things that if you watch that show, it's like they never answer the question, what the fuck is in the basement? It's like, okay, and they just leave you hanging. Um, so quick tech news. Twitter has announced that they're going to be changing their platform uh, to, you know, they're kind of gearing up to uh, attract new users. And one of the things they're going to do is get rid of hashtags. And a, a lot of the, sh- yeah, this is crazy, right? 
They, and again, they get rid of a lot of the short codes like DM or R. Like there's certain things you could type. I, f- I forget all of them, but to make it easier to interact on Twitter right from the command line or whatever, the virtual command line, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they want they want to make it basically more appealing to the average user, more like Facebook, so so more like a point and click Ooh. thing. That's that's my impression because I saw a new interface on that show at midnight. They were making fun of the new interface. It looks like Facebook. It looks like they're going for Facebook. It's terrible. What makes Twitter great is that it attracts the people that really get social media and are at least tech savvy enough to figure it out. And there's already enough yeah. idiots as it is. If you guys want to be scared, I'm going to give you a fun little thing to do. And you guys can call in on voicemail and, and share anything funny you find. This will be a fun thing to do. So, again, a, a voicemail line is 206-415-497. And let's do this. Go on a Twitter app like Uber Social or um, the Twitter itself on your phone. Um, what's another good one? Hootsuite, Tweetcaster. And look up tweets nearby. Make sure your GPS is on. Oh. And look at tweets that are nearby you. It's a great way to meet people that are nearby. It's cool. That's like Tinder, right? Yeah, it, oh, exactly. But uh, how do you, how do, you do that? Okay. Hookups, I so, can so, I can see I stalker this? killing mass killings coming. Yeah, that's definite stalker territory. Well, what, that's why Matt wants to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah, how do you do it? <laughs> what's What's great about it is when you do that. I swear, no matter where you go, you find the most ghetto things. <laughs> how, do you, how do you do that, though? Say, okay, talk me through it, Yogi. I've got my app open right now. Using an official Twitter app? Uh, is, yeah. I have to show you offline, because I know where it's... It's somewhere buried in here, I'm sure. But Yeah, see, that's why I don't like... The Twitter app itself actually isn't as good as the other the third-party apps. It's very yeah. streamlined. Yeah. But it, okay. I know it's in there. I know it's in there. But if you, I, I use Uber Social, and Uber Social is amazing. It breaks down Twitter streams into video, pictures. You can have an inner circle, so you don't get all the other spam. You can just focus on a few people that you actually care about, like your friends. You can mm-hmm. has full support for lists. That's my that's my plug there. Uh, but yeah, look through a local search and some stuff, funny stuff happens. Eleven. On a very serious note, getting rid of hashtags is going to disrupt a lot of things. I know a lot. Like if you watch shows now. There's always a hashtag at the bottom. Like that's how yeah. they measure audience now with hashtags because Nielsen ratings are unreliable because everyone's downloading yeah. and streaming. Um, so getting rid of hashtags is going to take away that metrics from a lot of the the top. Exactly. TV and it's gonna uh, it's gonna for people that actually learn how to use Twitter to find things, the hashtag is a great way to find relevant information. You know, mm-hmm. rather than, it's rather than going to someone you follow and just reading their entire stream, the hashtag always gives you something that interest you like if you hashtag doctor who hashtag sega whatever you want to do hashtag wtf you know whatever boot you can find something <laughs> but on that same note 90 percent of the population misuses hashtags just all they do is like they just take what they're saying and hashtag every word as if somehow their conversation is going to become trending right like a lot of people don't understand hashtags well see the, the the, those people that do hashtag pr- uh spam they automatically yeah. get truncated they, yeah. If you do too many hashtags, eventually you don't show up in results because they basically put a, a dunce hat on you and put you on timeout. You just don't know. Take that dunce, twit dunce. <laughs> but dunce, dunce sitters. this oh. is what I think about it though. Everybody's integrating hashtags. Facebook is supporting them now. Google Plus and other places you see hashtags showing up because it's an interesting way of of putting a tag or a, a keyword or a category category built into a, a message in line or a title in line right so i don't think they're gonna get rid of it completely i think it's gonna make it more behind the scenes and what they should do is give it make it so that everybody has the option you could you could upgrade to this new crappy facebook looking version or keep it the old school way that's what it should be not like facebook did with the timeline you know everybody got the fourth no. upgrade here's what's happening the new way and we don't know how it's doing it the new way has been optimized to make money for twitter so i guarantee you uh, there's going to be some element there where they can either collect data easier on the new way, better advertisements, something. But you're not going to have a choice, right? There's no, there's no way they're doing this just on a whim. This is like a heavily researched move on Twitter's part, and I think they're looking to make a crap ton of money out of it. Well, see, I don't, I, I call BS on that. I don't think they're not making I enough. Call money BS on that. you. You know why? They make tons of money just from user insights, from all the things that are trending, and providing that to marketers. 
They have the promoted tweets that show up in your stream for people that you're not following. They have, um, they can provide all that, all that, all those, all that data, all those data points to people that want the market research to produce new ad campaigns or whatever yeah, they're doing. Yeah. I mean, now the new interface, though, like right to the right side, of it, I think has people you should follow. That's totally going to be sponsored. People are going to pay money to have their name show up in people you should follow. Um, so maybe they're opening up new revenue stream. Either way, I trust Twitter knows what it's doing. Uh, I like the Twitter I have now. The appeal to me is that it's it's quick, it's easy, it doesn't have all the trappings of all the other social media crap. Um, <laughs> and I, I I rarely tweet anyways, but I use it to get information out when I need to. Hi, yeah, my name gonna, is I'm Facebook. Invest... Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's on its way out. <clears throat> I, yeah. Maybe not this year or next year, but like my... I go on my Facebook wall. It's my great aunt. It's my aunt. Uh, it's my uncle, and it's like my teachers. Like rarely now am I getting news from people my age. I'll be your well, friend. Well, you know what? You know what it is. Um, in in uh, in the marketing world, we have a thing like this. It's loosely called the rule of six. Uh, yes. Every every social network has lasted around six years, give or take. Friendster, MySpace, you know, yeah. and tons of other ones you could think of. So Facebook is well past that shelf life, so it's it's gonna be downhill from here. Or up. They bought Oculus Rift though, so Yeah. Let's not even get into that. Let's get let's finish the news. We got too many good things to talk about, but if we have enough time, we we'll definitely can free ball and revisit some of this stuff. Yeah, definitely Ball it up. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Let's uh, finish up the news. So yeah, great news everybody. Great news. You ready? What's that yogi? Do you you guys watch uh, tabletop? The show? No. Oh, with Will Eaton? Yes. I haven't watched it, but is it good? It's awesome. I love tabletop games, and I love Will okay. Wheaton, and I love Felicia Day. Will Wheaton, <laughs> wait, Will Wheaton's the guy that played in that, uh, what's that Geo movie? Uh, Gone to Prison or something like that? Um, uh, so what, he's the, the Scottish guy with the guild on, uh, on, the, on the guild. He's yeah, yeah. the douchey guy in there. But he's on a bunch of other things. I mean, he's, he was... Uh, Isn't he the one that plays the head lawyer in um, that show that's out yeah. now? Suits. You're thinking of Saved by the Bell guy. No. <laughs> You're getting your guys mixed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario of, like, no. no, no. Um, Zach, like, cut it up. No. Like, you know the, you know, you know the, the head guy on. Uh, have you ever guys ever seen the show Suits? Uh, I have seen one episode. Yeah. Well, you know the the blonde, the 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 actual lawyer. That's not Zach from freaking Saved by the that? Bell. No, it's not. I You're on Zach crack. No, I it's not. Crack. Not that. Then you need to have your shelf life adjusted. His real name is Mark Paul Gossler, by the way. Oh, he's right. It's not that. Thank you. Then that's not the right person. Okay. Uh, is Gabriel Max? Okay, is it think, Harvey or Mike? I think we're going down a dark place anyway. Because what, what are we doing now? I don't remember him being in that. He's been on Eureka and he's been a bunch of other things. He was Wesley Crusher from Star Trek. Mm hmm. Oh, I know. He was the little kid on on Star Trek. He's got blonde He's hair now. Star Trek. Kind of no, long, blonde. Nope. No. no. Never mind. All right, you're moving on. on. Yep. Now you're on crack. I am. <laughs> sh don't tell everybody. Good try, though. Good try. <laughs> By the way, tabletop tabletop's coming back for season th season three. It's been crowdfunded. Everybody got together, rallied to b bring back season three. So it's a good time to catch up with it because it's in it's gonna probably start production soon. So there's two scenes to watch. It's a great show. And basically, what tabletop does. It's like celebrity bowling, but without Chris Hardwick, which is already great because he's kind of a douchebag. <laughs> well, it's just the Chris Hardwick show whenever Chris Hardwick is on. Yeah, he's, and, and <laughs> him. Hi, I'm Chris Hardwick. It's like, okay, less of, less of you, more about everyone else. Well, you made a great point the other day in the chat there, Yogi, and it's, it's what Chris Hardwick – Chris Hardwick is a good bowler. His dad was a professional <laughs> bowler. Now he passed away earlier this year. Uh, so he made a show specifically to show how good of a bowler he is. Um, Terrible. I, I haven't watched it. I love the Nerdist, which is the the podcast that started it off. Except for the navel gazing, um, it's they had a lot of good guests. But then uh, Chris Hardwick, if you're listening, I respect the work you're doing because you're doing a shit ton <laughs> of work. And and please add me to your network because I do honestly respect. But every episode was like how <laughs> I'm really digging a hole for myself. Every episode was like how Chris Hardwick ha used to be fat. Uh, he doesn't drink anymore. Yeah. And uh, how difficult it is to be an actor. Like, that is every episode of The Nerdist. Uh, yeah. I can't. It, uh, it's too so great in interviews, but yeah. 
He's good at interviews. He's definitely good at that. He's got a very great voice, very good projection, articulation, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's just it's just too much about him. If you made it less about him and more about everyone else on the network, great. And that's what I like about Will Whedon and Felicia Day. And and Will Whedon on, on, on tabletop, he loses almost every match. <laughs> you know, it's not he's, he's not choosing that. games that he's like awesome at to destroy people in. I think he's only won once in two seasons. <laughs> You know, so it's a big difference. It's more about the the camaraderie and the and and the the social interaction between the guests, not about who's the best and just whipping it out on the table. You know. So <laughs> so basically, you're giving the example of how geeky antics is. Basically, we're yeah. there for everybody else, right, Yoke? I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. that's basically how you're explaining it. I like oh. to yeah, I like to think we're more on par with geek and geek and sundry. Shout outs. Okay. I've actually gotten replies replies from Will Whedon, so I feel special. <laughs> you should you should listen to um if you like that listen to a podcast called Nerd Poker, uh, with Brian Hussein, uh, and, and it's a bunch of comics and they just they do um Dungeons and Dragons they do Dungeons and Dragons campaigns for like five episodes arcs, mm-hmm. uh, and it's just comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons and that's it's hilarious. I've 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 heard it good stuff. Yeah. There's so there's so much great content out there. It's hard to keep up. So, but definitely, uh, I'm a big fan of tabletop. It's one of the few things that I make a concerted effort to make sure I keep up with because I love it that much. And I just love playing tabletop games. I love my video games, but it's something about a tabletop game, a pen and paper game where you're connecting with people and really getting to know each other, you know? It's something that's missing, I think, sometimes. But anyway, more great news, guys. And this one is for Chip Settle over at the B-Team Podcast. The Hearthstone iPad app, and this is why I was saying you were spoiling this earlier, has been released in Canada, Matt. And oh, Canada. we la, get mobile la, versions la, of our la, games. La, la, la. So Hearthstone and free healthcare. Thanks, <laughs> Dave. <Thank you. laughs> I guess we really do have to move to Canada. But it's also it's also out in New Zealand and Australia. I put other countries. I, I, I confirm it's just three countries. Blame Those are like Canada. test markets. Um, so I I couldn't wait, Matt. By the way, he's enjoying his song over there. So Blame Matt, Canada. I, I couldn't wait, and I, I forgot to tell you this, you know, earlier. I, <laughs> yeah. I decided to move to P- Petersboro. Am I close to you? Yeah, you actually Peterborough. You're actually about an hour away. That's great. We should get together for a beer, dude. He said Peter. Yeah. Peterborough. <laughs> I, I I lived there for about uh, ten minutes, uh, and Uh-oh. then I moved away. Did you Stop. hack the system, Yogi? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to ruin it, but i tell you what. If you guys want to find out how you could get an early access to Hearthstone on the iPad or iPhone, mm-hmm. uh, there may or may not be information over at geekyantics.net. Okay, I'm going to look. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna be, go I'm gonna, my, it's going to go up tomorrow, probably. I'm going to go on my Google Play. Don't go now. And you're... What? Oh yeah, man! We totally gotta play this together. You know, you haven't played this yet. I haven't played it yet. No. Oh, he's killing. All right, we're gonna come back, to dude. No, yeah, as soon as you can get through Yogi, then you'll have to beat me. Oh That's yeah, the it. it's not. Uh, it's not in the Google Play Store for Canada. No, they don't have it on Android yet. It's only on on iOS. Oh, f that f. To I know, I know, I know. Yeah, they're gonna get it on Android before we will, noob. Chill. Well, Android. <laughs> Android Jeez. Is- I think Android is <laughs> a month or two. <laughs> I think Android is out about a month or two. You freaking but, uh, noob. <laughs> Show me your old face. <laughs> okay. Go, Yoki. This is my old face. Thank I'm you. sorry. I can't, I like <laughs> interrupted like three sentences in a row. Like he's like, okay, Yoki. <laughs> Timmy. So, so for those that are not in Canada, New Zealand, or Australia, uh, the rest of us have to wait a few weeks, and then Android is going to be probably at least a couple of months. Um, oh, and I got a couple of questions here. I got people in my in my Twitch channel, but I'm, I'm trying to get them all congregated over on Obi wan X2. If you're over on my Come channel, now you only get the audio, but there will be <laughs> highlights later. So Obi Wan X two on Yogi Zilla on Twitch for those that are not watching us live, FYI. But uh, so yeah, back to back to Hearthstone. <laughs> you guys have way too much fun. Wait, April Fools was last week, guys. Okay, come on. 
sorry. Again, you're getting you're getting diluted. Please continue with your news while Obi does something weird with the microphone. Over at Hearthstone, and by the way, we talk about Hearthstone like every time I'm trying to concentrate. We talk about Hearthstone every week on VGO. Apparently, it's a big game. Apparently, I've got to get into this. So yes, once I know. It comes out on my ghetto Android, I will definitely check it out. I know, Mich- I know Michelle is big in, and then, you know, yeah, she's big. In, she's got a big into it. It's funny because Michelle is, is is actually more like the average Hearthstone player, someone that would normally not even look at a TCG game or a deck building game, but mm. it's Blizzard is great at making any kind of genre accessible. Not so much, you know, watering it down, but they make it so that people, it's not as overwhelming. You can break into it. Like, Heroes of the Storm, that's another big one. And I love my MOBAs. Obi does too. I, mm-hmm. We're going to try to get, a, get in on that uh, technical alpha. But anyway, so Hearthstone, you got to get on it, man. Just just download it on your, on your, on your computer. It's, it's Mac and Windows compatible. And we can play together, man. It'd be fun. I'll school you. I already had I, I had a couple of friends join this week and I, I've been uh, training them. One of them is already whooping my butt, so I have to tell you something. <laughs> and I was in the beta. I mean, eh, whatever. But um, another another thing. What else do they have cooking up for Hearthstone? There's a bunch of stuff actually. Um, we're not gonna go through it all, during the show. Again, we want to get to the main discussion as as quick as possible. But there's a lot of stuff coming up. Adventure mode. Um, they're doing, they might bring the expert duels back so, so you could, de- uh, duel against bots and farm more, more gold and be m- more prepared when you fight against human players. Um, cause that was a thing in the beta and they got rid of it for whatever reason. Um, and they, they said that a- adventure mode should be coming next because it, it was supposed to come right up pretty much soon after the iPad release, the iPad app release or iOS release. So that's a big thing. Uh, oh, and the biggest thing that I, I noticed is now when you get disconnected, OB, I don't know if you noticed, if you get disconnected now, you can actually rejoin your match, which is great, especially if you're playing ranked, because so many games were lost if your internet took a crap, there's an automatic loss, because you couldn't rejoin the match. Right. You know, so now Does you... that stop rage quitters from uh, benefiting? Is that what it's it's for? Like, if you if you quit a match, you automatically lose, correct? See, no, if you quit, if you actually physically quit because you're sending a command to the server saying you quit, oh, okay. it's different. That will, that will count as a loss because of rage quit. But if you get disconnected, like if you lose, just suddenly lose internet connection or the app crashes. The... Or someone turns off their internet connection when they're losing. See, yeah, if they, if they pull the plug, I don't know. Yeah, they won't, they won't get in trouble for that because they're actually not, like you said, that you have to actually have to give them the command. Uh, actually, even if you alt F four, they're actually they're not seeing that. They, you have to actually say quit or concede or whatever. Yeah, yeah. How's this? See, people, used, people have pl- used to pull pull plugs a lot on uh, on Xbox Live or Dashboard. <laughs> it was really easy to do that. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think you have to actually formally quit or concede for it to count as a loss. But uh, yeah, that's, that's right. a thing to be able to rejoin those matches because it, it, it's still kind of. And a growing, it's going through growing pains. So, that f- for a little while you were getting disconnected randomly, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it wasn't good because you're losing matches that you had in the bag. You know, uh, what else? What else do we got coming up? So for people, for wrestling fans, you know, Re- WrestleMania 30 just passed this past weekend. I didn't even, just, I didn't even know. To be honest, I've been into wrestling for a long time. I used to really <laughs> love it, but. Yeah. But you know, I it, I kind of get nostalgic whenever I hear people talking about it and being really excited about wrestling, and I'm hearing some things like uh, you know supposedly WWE, not the WWF, <laughs> they're confused, them, they're different. <laughs> their 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 network is is really under the mark. Uh, they need to like increase their profits by like seventy percent or something in order to keep the network going, and that's just to turn a slight profit or break even or something. Um, so. Kind of scary, mm-hmm. scary time to be a wrestling fan. But uh, even more tragic news than that: um, the Ultimate Warrior passed away recently, and uh, his real name was James Hellwig. He died at age 54, and, uh, and the crazy thing about it is he died just days after being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on April 5th, I believe. Right. So, mm-hmm. so you know, yeah, yeah, Obi was talking about this with me uh, last time we chatted on the phone. I, I, you know, you know, I remember Obi. I remember he, he used to just have such a presence, even though I hated him for beating Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania <laughs> six. Yeah. So like he just he put the dude put on the show the energy 
like he just had like he was he was crazy that and energy I, was constituted from <laughs> uh the many drugs that the dude did I, okay I, I too soon that guy was crazy am i am i out of bounds by saying no he, he was crazy. psycho okay you go out there and you're just some pretty crazy stuff as well like outside of his role as wrestling mm -hmm. he, he, he was not anyways we won't we won't, it doesn't get too controversial but yeah i mean he you know <laughs> let's give him his at least his uh, at least a, a day of not being bashed you know he had his issues definitely but as a wrestler you have to give him props he was he was he knew how to put on the show like I like in his I, role I was, as wrestler, yeah, I'll concede. In his role as a wrestler, he did a great job. Yeah. In his role as a human being, we can discuss that. But in his role as Ultimate Warrior, the persona, he brought a lot to res wrestling in it, and he definitely uh, yeah deserves praise for that for sure. Like, see, I I, I go back like the days I really love, uh, really got into wrestling were like days of the Heart Foundation and and the Canadian. Ha ah, there you go. That's your people, right? Yeah, now. the screw job took place here in uh, Montreal. There you go. And uh, what else? Uh, Oh, and uh, the Rockers. That's one of my favorite. The Rockers was one of my favorite uh, uh, tag teams. You know, uh, Marty Janetti and uh, Shawn Michaels, right? Is that right? Right. Right. I'm trying to remember. That's right, right? I can't remember now. Uh, so. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We'll just go a while. But, yeah, you know, my, 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 definitely feeling some sadness and nostalgia there. But uh, Obi's like, I don't care. Moving on. No, I'm still trying to figure out why. Like half of the people in the Twitch chat right now have me on my on the left ear, and then half of them have me on the right ear. So I'm still trying to. Because they're wearing their headphones wrong, probably. I, I, dude, it's confusing me. It's <laughs> anyway. No, I don't really have yeah, anything. Also, I'm just trying to figure out these tech issues for everybody. Kind of sad. Um, yeah, it was another one of those days where. Everyone who never once talked about wrestling or Ultimate Warrior were all of a sudden uh, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior fans and really heartbroken about his loss. So yeah, what well, you know? The, <laughs> see, I'm gonna say on that. I feel that's, that applies to everything. Like, yeah, we take oh, us yeah. for granted. Like, for example, I always like I, the other day. I just randomly thought it would be really sad if Dick Van Dyke died. But I don't watch any of his latest stuff. But when I watch like his old stuff, like when he was in Chibi Chibi Bang Bang and uh, Mary Poppins and stuff like that, I'm watching with, that with the family, you know, I'm like, oh, I love Dick Van Dyke. He's so, so lovable. Dick Van Dyke show. I used to love watching that. You know, that's true. He's an icon. That's true. Yeah. You know, but we won't stop. Most of us won't stop to realize that they're lost until they are gone. And then we're like, damn, we re I really like them. And then it's too late. <laughs> that's, like, that's a good point, especially yeah. artists. No, especially no artists. artists. Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's that whole thing to see what happens. What? Go ahead, go there's ahead. There's that whole thing. That, there's, sorry, there's that always. There's that thing that always happens with uh, artists and and you know celebrities where, you know, everyone the day before they die will like go on and on about how they're idiots and stupid and waste of skin, but then they'll die and all of a sudden they become martyrs and angels and oh, yeah. misunderstood. And I feel sometimes that happens with uh, the wrong people. Now, ugh, I don't know how to phrase this properly, but death in itself isn't an accomplishment. <laughs> like, I don't think... I think if you lead a good life and you die, that's when you deserve a lot of praise. But I, I think if you're not a good person to start with, then you die. It's not... It doesn't <laughs> automatically mean people should praise you because you died. Does that make yeah. any sense? Yeah, I get I what you're that, I see that happening on Facebook sometimes where people are like... People, like, bad people died and you're like, oh, he was misunderstood. I'm like, no, I don't think so. Wow, I'm making dogs bark right now, okay? Yeah, I'm reading the chat. Um, but no, Matt, to, to, to come on your point there is the only time people actually reflect back and make them look like heroes is when they do die. Because, they're, yeah, of course, yeah. somebody's not going to say, well, that, uh, okay, let's use Ultimate Warrior. That Ultimate Warrior, he was a druggie and a... Uh, he All he did is he did this, this, and this, and he beat his wife, and he hit his kids, and... No, they're gonna remember him for this, this, and this. The great things that he'd done. That's this. Yeah. Everybody's. That's just how everybody treats everybody when they die. It's not what they did yeah. wrong. But it's this weird absolution. I mean, uh, what uh, the Westboro Baptist Church guy died, and everyone's like, "Yay, ding dong, the witch is dead." So it does happen <laughs> where people die, and people are like, "Good, I'm glad." Right. Right. But I, I understand your points, and this is something for a much bigger debate. 
<laughs> much bigger debate. We gotta, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we obviously need a philosophical, uh, you know, introspective podcast to just talk about these things and just go off on complete tangents. Talk about the. We could talk. We could, I think we could take the most asinine of topics and make it into something deep. Like you know what's crazy? Ice cubes. You know how like ice cubes sometimes <laughs> it's like let's just say something stupid. Like that'd be the start of it. I think my point is, and and and, and we can stop after this. But my point is with Ultimate Warrior kind of highlights what happens with social media is that Ultimate Warrior, someone who's no one thought about outside of wrestling for years, someone who you know arguably wasn't that great to certain segments of the human population um he passes away and then all of a sudden you get social media just jumping on this ultimate warrior was a a great guy and what a tremendous loss and it's and i'm not making a judgment either way on that i'm just saying it's an interesting phenomenon to watch when someone passes away and then he becomes this huge figure in social media these days whether it's deserved or not and i I just i don't know what that is and it's just it's interesting to watch for me true I think there's a few things in play there. If you want to get famous, fake your own death. And also, I, th- I think it's a courtesy, unless you're a real scumbag, like really just everybody yeah. can agree you're, you're, you're an enemy, you're, ev- you're the evil guy, you know. But no, there's nothing redeeming about you. You don't get the little grace period of, well, he just recently died. Let's focus on the good, like Obi said. But moving on. Really, you guys, uh, I, know, I know if Obi was into Firefly. Did you ever get into Firefly? I love Firefly. It's All passion. right, dude. Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Nathan Fillion is gonna be making a cameo on Guardians of the Galaxy. Supposedly, that's what I'm hearing. I love I'm this guy. That movie. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I love this guy. Do you love this guy? I love Nathan. I love this guy. I wish he would get back to being like geeky Nathan Fillion. He's on that show. Um... Oh, Castle. Castle, and and I'm sure it's good, but I want him to get back to like doing geeky Nathan Fillion stuff. I want to be a swashbuckling hero again. Yeah, dude. He, you know what? Like, I I've watched <laughs> so Cast- I watched Castle here and there. He's totally a man crush for me, and like I love the fact that he'll he'll reply to his tweets and retweet your stuff, and he says the most random stuff. I, he's just great. Uh, I think what he said the other day, <laughs> something about urinals and like how he'd like to have something to be able to do while he's going in a urinal. And I'm like, dude, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, like get like an iPad in front of you, you can play a game or something. Yeah, I think he was talking about making special stalls with like a, a thing to hold your iPad so you don't drop it on or your iPhone or whatever, your Android, so you don't drop it in the toilet bowl. How long does it take for him to go pee, though? I mean, is this really something that needs well, I know he does kill time? Yeah, and well, he had a, another thing he said uh, was something about having a target in the toilet. You know, I think that's pretty. That's a good idea because a lot of people seem to have trouble aiming properly. Like they're going, they're hitting the wrong side, and they're getting all that splatter all over their place. And then you're like doing that weird thing where you don't want to walk right in front of the urinal or next to certain angles. It's like okay, there's there's this piss all over the place. Let me get back over here and I'll shoot across the room. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, you, you know, it's been like over 10 years since Firefly was on, and I still secretly wish the Firefly would come back, but we know there's a lot of uh, bureaucracy involved with that. I've got a Firefly comic book somewhere here, because they continue the Firefly story in comic book form, just like Buffy and uh, Angel. See, that's so if cool. you want your fix, that's how you can get it. I can't find well, it now, but yeah. Right, right. Well, um, yeah, Miss Miss Nicholas. Don't don't link stuff like that in the chat. You know, we're trying to have fun. You know, yeah, we don't need we don't need you to be fun. a douche and, and start doing that to us. So, anyway, moving on here, we're going oh, to, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need that kind of stuff. This is a, just a talk show. It's not a porn site. Thank you very much. But anyway, moving on here. Gamer, so, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> doing some every week. We <laughs> are you guys? Where are we moving on? Or are you guys continuing on this, this subject? Oh, look- Tiger Claw, Tiger oh. Claw's in the chat with us from all games. La Tigra, hey, Sweet. yeah, nice. We got a full party over here. Oh right yeah, now. hell so, yeah. We were gonna talk about League of Legends, but uh, Matt, Matt, you don't play League, do you? Nope. You no interest in that kind of thing. We're like League of Stupid Stuff. Shout, shout out to JVK uh, Gamer. I'm, I'm trying to get everybody. <laughs> Let, no, <laughs> I know why you don't like it. The toxicity of the community, right? I think we talked about this before. Yeah, I'm a Redditor. I go on Reddit all the time, and sometimes I get 
like rogue League of Legends posts, and it sounds like the snobbiest circle jerky community. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of elitism. You know, that's 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 something we're actually gonna talk about esports, and hopefully we get to that about some of the bad things about that, how it breeds toxicity and elitism mm-hmm. communities. But the game itself is great. If you know what, play it with us, with with Obi and 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 me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll get some other people together, and we'll play some private games against bots. It's lots of fun. Once you get rid of the ass hats, it's a great game. I really want to join us out there. Because that, that, that's one of the main games we talk about. And so that actually, we originally started as kind of like a League of Legends podcast. But we said we need to branch mm-hmm. out a little further than that. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in League of Legends. Um, I won't get all into it, but your uh, Ultra Rapid Fire mode is staying for now, it looks like. Gragas, I know uh, Obi is excited about this. Gragas is has been buffed like crazy <laughs> and, uh, and now he's more of a what's going on mm. okay i don't know it's more, so he's not, doing the gragas dance dude oh okay <laughs> you know what i'm, I'm blind and he's got the big like, gragas is great let me tell you that's that's for if there's any reason if there's any, any reason for matt to play league of legends is for that because you, you gragas dragon's dance <laughs> yeah, dude no he does, he's a drunk he, He's, yeah, a, he's, right. he's Scottish, or he's he, Irish. he's one of those. He drank, <laughs> little, dude. He's a giant keg, and he drinks from it, and and like he just hobbles about. It's it's great. It's it's so much fun. I'm telling you, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot more changes recently. We'll talk about some of them uh, next week probably. But I mean, there's there's been changes to Gragas. Uh, he's a lot more of a brawler now, so he's he's a true mage brawler. So he's a little more. Yeah, tanky. let's get. Some. I mean, he, I really like Gragas to begin with. I don't know that's one of the people that Obi main, so definitely. Um, they've done a lot of um, changes to the summoner spells and the items, tons of stuff. We'll get we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. But let's move on. So, real quick shout outs. You want to do the shout outs, Obi, or shall I? Yeah, I'll go ahead. <laughs> so, real big shout outs. So people that are not here right now, we, I think we cover everybody in the chat. Um, SG and Jake McClenahan. McClenahan. Okay, I, I got his name for right Your there. Your towel. Huh? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> SG and Jake and Jake and Jake Neo Jake. They get lots of love, much love for helping us out. Uh, rumors. Is- I, I like Jake and. Yeah, they're, they're really good guys and. They're helping us put together some bumpers for our show, some music. So we got some. We got another. We got a few other shows coming out, and they're gonna help us uh, get this stuff together so we can hook it up. We do. <laughs> yes. I'm just playing. I, Ovi, I'm gonna kill you. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just reading the script, man. No. Who's the Who's the racy stuff from this? I'm gonna kill you, Matt. All right. Oh, Matt's the blue. <laughs> Matt's the blue cursor. Now I know. Someone, someone's been erasing stuff. I know it, but good thing I know the stuff off the top of my head, pretty much. I'm not erasing stuff. I'm adding stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you added just. <laughs> You're already here. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> also, shout outs to Chip Sella, Sean Freeman, Matt Bradford. I really wish he could be here, and a, and a bunch of other people that have worked hard to get us featured on all games. Were, were you pimping on our show too? You were I'm talking you... about you guys when when I was on the show, I pimped it out on VGO and uh, and uh, ZombieCast. Mm-hmm. I know ZombieCast did, but on VGO, it's like you forgot about us completely. Yeah, yeah. do you know what Freeman did? He went behind your back. He emailed Derek. He's like, "Do not let these jackholes onto All Games Network. They're gonna drag you down." I was there when he did it. Freeman did that. You. Okay, so <laughs> now this is not a stream for Let's Move to Canada for Hearthstone. This is a stream. This is a podcast. Freeman, Mister, I thought was Pimp Daddy. Not no more. No. Yeah, he comes You're, off as like the nicest supportive guy. I, no. Oh, challenge? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Challenge Stop accepted. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. I once, and this is no joke, we were on a video chat. <laughs> this is no he joke. Had a puppy, he had a puppy, and he was spraying uh, graffiti in the puppy's eyes yep. right in front of me. That's yeah. terrible. He was terrible. And he was laughing about it, too. I couldn't believe that. Well, he was Team Lizzie and Team Governor for Dude, a little while. I'm, I'm, I'm so, straight up waiting I for. Guy, but I, I want to worry about him. I'm straight up waiting for him to come in and be like, "What are you guys talking shit for? What the fuck? Hey, <laughs> he's he's gonna ping the Skype and he's gonna make me add him to the call." No, Sean. Sean is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I, I that is that is genuine, Matt. He is he is the stand up dude. So that puppy thing is real, but he is still a stand up dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, and I also yeah, recognize... Sarah McLaughlin in the background. <laughs> yeah. Just for pennies a day, you could save this puppy's <laughs> life. From getting sprayed in the eye with graffiti and putty. Oh my god, that was that was a great rendition, whoever was doing that. I couldn't tell. It, it, it put a little tear in my eye. I don't know. I got my, I might have to get start drinking right now. If you guys want to see a good one that my uh we made up in our unit, go I'll I'll give you guys a link after the show, but it's funny. It's just it's a recruiting video and it's got like the the song in the background playing and and then our our uh our leader of the clan's like oh yeah just for pennies a day can help us run our servers <laughs> we really appreciate that everybody's loved here we really want to convey the point that for only pennies a day <laughs> it just goes <laughs> over and over and over it's Cost so funny coffee every week <laughs> you can help oh, fund yeah. our servers and make sure that we can play the games that we love to play. <laughs> you, know, you know what? That's a very good point. That whenever they say for the for the cost of a cup of coffee a day, you can help support blah blah blah. That is but that's true. A, I love when salespeople use that because, like, well, what kind of cup of coffee? Are you talking about like coffee coffee from like a mom and papa shop or a little uh, a hole in the wall or a tr- uh, little, one of the little Starbucks. grease trucks or a Starbucks? Because Starbucks, you're almost spending ten dollars for a cup of coffee. If you do that, you know, thirty times in the month, that's three hundred bucks. Now, not. <laughs> I want to um, bitch at something right now. If anybody that works yeah. owns or portrays anything or has to do anything with starbucks i hate you on a personal level because there's no sense in the world okay now i understand the people that get those soy foamy latte whatever you guys drink but if i go there and get just got plain cup of coffee with cream and sugar and the bitch is still eight dollars kill i'm done yeah no no one no one should be getting traditional drip from Starbucks. That defeats the purpose. Well, no, I we went there because of my wife. She she likes the you know the iced mocha whatever the fluffy whatever the crap she gets. But I just want coffee. I'm not, or I'll get like a espresso shot with you know in the coffee or something something that's made there. But eight bucks, come on. Here's what you got to do though. I don't want to uh, talk about it anymore. And cream. Get the strawberries and cream. It'll change your life, is what I'm saying. Now, what you got to do is actually you got to go with your wife, and when they put the strawberry cream on the table, you make her take it, and you take her other drink, and then you walk out so it doesn't look like you actually are going to drink it. So it doesn't look like you're a climber? Yeah. So once you get to your car, no one's watching you. You taste it, and it is delicious. It is it is fantastic. Sorry, Yogi. I know Yogi's like, we got to go, but strawberries and cream i'm the one usually saying that by the way we gotta hurry up we gotta stay on time i can stay a little later because i know I'm, I'm the cause that we're running late so <laughs> hey uh let me tell you this uh first of all i didn't finish all the shout outs yeah. we cannot forget tim curtis who no. handles all the social media all games a great friend of ours he's been coming to my streams to ob streams when we're on twitch playing whatever we're playing you know, whether it's a Retro Friday thing, which is the thing that we're doing, or League of Legends or Hearthstone, he's there. He's, he's the man. And I know he's got a really busy schedule because he's got a, a day job that takes a lot out of him. And then he's working at night to do all the social media stuff and support all of these podcasts and shows and everything. It's crazy. It's crazy. He's the man. Mm-hmm. But uh, any, anyone else we missed, we did not forget you. We were trying to move things along. But I want to say, Tiger Claw in the chat and Stan agrees, and I agree. Cuban coffee, definitely. If you have Cuban coffee in your area, that's that's way better, a way better way <laughs> to spend your money. You know, because they do that, they do that thing where like they put the, like the um, they like foam the sugar and the and the milk in there somehow. It's mm. crazy. I've seen them when they do it, mm. and I diabetes. It's it's, oh, it's amazing. It's it's strong, but it's not overpowering. It's oh, it's good. It's good like me and i'm puerto rican i love the cuban coffee oh cuban sandwiches cuban sandwiches are good too with the roast beef and uh they put a garlic butter spread on the bread oh garlic and, butter and then they iron <laughs> they iron the bread 
Una, una oh. plancha. Lo, lo ponen en una no, they, plancha y después... The panini. They, they panini it. Sí, uh, sí, They sí. press it. Yeah. Sí, la panini. Eh, lo ponen en el panini. Eso mismo. Sí. Eh, eh, oh. Matt Bradford, él, él habla español. Él, 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 He's got way more attractive. Obi-Wan X2. No habla shit. Let's go. English here, guys. <laughs> That's for the Latinos and all. I'm sorry. I watched uh, uh, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, and there were Latinos in that. Does that count? Just don't call a, a, a female, a Latin female Latino, because then you're trying to say she's a hermaphrodite, just saying. Latino what? and Latina. Though it's like a lot of situations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. good thing you found your one. You don't have to wait. Yeah, I have found my one, and she's Croatian. Croatian Canadian. Cro yeah, more Canadian, because she's lived here for a long time. There you go. I know how to, I know how to speak Croatian a little bit. That's a thing. Don't over it. That's a thing. <laughs> nice way to be racist. Let's move on. <laughs> Jackal. Hey, I love when people say, "Oh, you speak Mexican," you know, like, "Okay, thank you." Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you should go. Yes, I do. Hi, where are you? And you just speak straight <laughs> English to them. They're like, "That's not Mexican." No, I speak Puerto Rican actually. <laughs> Well, you can we, slap we him. Gotta, slap him. I'm going to punch him. He's got pretty... He, Matt can roll his R's. Rojas. Rojo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And shout out to Fred. I know we mentioned him already. <laughs> but shout out to Fred because he was the first person that gave me a chance to to kind of pimp myself out on all games. Because I was he was the first show I was on, on, on all games. Uh, Gaming History 101. Just put him in. Yeah. Fred Rojas, a.k.a. Spider's Venom. How can I forget my my friend, my brother from another mother? All Games is a great network of people. You got your, yeah. your Chip Sella, you got your friend. Like, every every show that's on there, you end up knowing every one of them, and they're all they're all good people. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Great. Definitely. <laughs> and, we're, and, we're not, and we're not biased by any means. <laughs> We've been pipping out All Games before we even got put on the network. Everybody that's watching from the beginning knows that. You know, it's like it's just like Matt says, uh, just good people that are just down to earth. You know, and it's very, they're all engaging. You know, it's not a, a show they're putting on on and off the air. They're just engaging people. Yeah, very supportive. And uh, I mean, I, I keep in contact with a lot of. I talk to you guys outside of this sometimes, except Obi. I block him. <laughs> I he, dude, he does for real. Cause I tried to, <laughs> I seriously tried to Skype him the other day, and he was online. Did you? He was online. And I Skyped him like three times, and he just ignored my call. I'm like, douche. So I went to another Skype. I went to another Skype. <laughs> and I tried to call him again. And he didn't say, hey, who is this or anything. He's like, nope. Done. Bloop. So, therefore, what I was going to ask Matt, remember that, Yogi? What I was going to ask him? You know, for never mind. I'm not going to ask it no more because he ignores what? me. I didn't ignore you. I, I, no. First of all, I have Skype on my Android phone. It's probably on all day. I probably missed those calls. If I saw your smiling face on my no, Skype, man. I would drop everything. I would drop my baby. Nope. To talk to you. <laughs> child. If I were, if I was like. Now, oh, definitely I'm not, because then you would endanger a child. Are you serious? You would well, just, you would endanger a kid just to talk to me? What kind of person are you? Our floors are padded. First of all, <laughs> floors are padded. He's got shag carpets. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Well, it's hard with most of got to do that. Who wasn't dropped by their parents constantly? I mean, it's just something that parents do, right? Me. Right. <laughs> and I didn't drop my kid ever. But uh, isn't oh, I don't think. Okay. Nope. Right. I got parents after this. I, I think if you don't drop your, your baby, you at least have to allow them to, like, throw a fit and roll off the sofa. Yeah, now, he has done baby. that many times. <laughs> You know, yeah. was, I wasn't watching him, so it's so my fault. Yeah, ours is my fault. if you if you're around a baby enough, no matter how much you love your baby or someone else's baby, when they start throwing that fan, they go, yeah, they put the fist in the air, they're like, Meh. they they're about to punch you, they turn to like a little demon, it's like, all right, before I I shake you up and put you down. No, no, no baby shaking. That's the number one rule of parenthood. Yeah, no baby shaking. But you know, everybody <laughs> point where they're like oh okay, stop I crying to take a breather you know Cause especially if it's your first one you're gonna be like you're gonna get flustered there's nothing that can prepare you for that nothing 
Oh. It tests your patience, that's for sure. Oh, are you trying to give me a hug there, Obi? I was trying to wring your neck. <laughs> oh. Again, oh yeah. In the fifth. And maybe the sixth. There is support ah! there. It's a, a quickie. <laughs> I was trying something new, I'm sorry. You just keep going with that. I'm not even going to say. I don't, I don't even want to finish my thought. <laughs> <laughs> You were going to talk about a sixth dimension. Is that show Cosmos on a... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Watch big guns and titties. Huh? Oops. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Quick. Well, well, Stan Farina saying in the, in the chat that live cam stripping, big business in... in uh, is it pronounced Bucharest? <laughs> Bucharest? <laughs> I almost forgot to pronounce that. But... Bad Bradford. <laughs> That's a big business, like every overseas, anywhere, really. I do gotta take off my jacket though. Cam oh. girls, except in the states, you just gotta get people <sighs> One season. Oh. You said don't talk Jesus about cosmos. Oh, oh, nice. Hey, oh, yeah. you might want to zoom in the camera a little bit, Matt. For <laughs> these, what, like. What I, what I was gonna say though <laughs> is that there is actually. This is why he's showing off his shirt. For those that are not watching on uh, on the video. I'm not, no, I didn't even show my name. On or on YouTube, you know. <sighs> I'm gonna just like oh, and I'm gonna finish the thought before Matt derails us some more. Buka I'm not. I said, oh, I said rest. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I'm I'm participating in the podcast. I don't consider it derailing. And we're all in agreement that Matt is derailing us, right? Well, I was just gonna say real quick, there is a concept that's fifth wall, and and the episode sixteen, which I believe aired tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, for those on our live show on on all games, you know, we talked about immersion. We talked a little bit about the fourth wall, but it is a fifth wall. And, the, and there's a whole other discussion about what that is. It's crazy. There's a, it's mind-boggling. What's the fifth wall? We won't get into it. That was like that's ne ne next time we'll talk about it. Maybe you know what? We got a show coming up. Our next show coming up. You're gonna. I, I know you're gonna love this, man. We're gonna. It's gonna be so dedicated to the behind more to behind the scenes of gaming, game theory, game mechanics, the psychology of it, strategies. Like just take. Yeah. And I'm totally analyzing it. There's nothing really out there like that. There's only a couple of hand uh, uh, podcasts I can think of that do that kind of thing. And then we could talk about things like stickiness, immersion, the fourth wall, you know, um, microtransactions, and all that kind of crap. You know, it's like the WTF of video gaming podcasts. There you go. But no, uh, no, Mark Maron. Maron. Mm. Ah, Maron. Maron, Maron. I, I love that episode. That's like the favorite episode. Where he's like, it's, it's not a text name. It's just Mark Maron. I love Mark Maron. He's so crusty. He is. But in a good way. Yeah. We we got a we got a Mark Maron over at, at all games. His name is Derek H. He's crusty but lovable. Yeah, he's crusty. <laughs> And lovable. Well, that's true. All right. What I've got two features you're letting me pick from, right? Or do you, well, yeah. Let me uh, just make sure they're properly tagged. Look at those two. Okay. We'll do a quick. We're gonna do a quickie. Now, Obi, before okay. we go to this quickie, you want to open it up again, o Obi? Sure. All Eddie? right. Do your thing again. Do the same way you did it before. I was. I'm ready for it now. <sighs> quickie. Here we go, guys. This is a quickie. Every. Now and then we throw out a quickie. It's about 10 minutes where we're just going to just rapidly talk about one thing. This last thing right here we want to talk about right now, The Walking Dead Season 4, final recap, which is the last episode, and predictions for Season 5. Game of Thrones is back, and TWD seems to be all but forgotten. Now we're going to talk about this. Matt, the first thing I want to ask you, what did you think of The Walking Dead, the final, the finale of season four? Uh, it was it was a lot of build up. I, I don't mm. think it, I got as many answers as I wanted to about Terminus. Nope. Um, but there was a lot of character. <laughs> what what they did in that episode is there is some character resolution. I mean, we finally got to see Rick decide on a path. Rick is no longer going to be second guessing himself. Rick is now badass Rick, and that that happened at the campsite. Yes, uh, finally. When he, when he, yeah, finally. There's no more, there's no more questioning his stuff anymore. Uh, and then Carl saw that for the first time that his dad's a badass, and Carl kind of backed down from being a little dick about it. Um, so I think what this season did is it, it got us to a place where all the characters are different. Glenn's Glenn's like a crazy, 
mercenary now. Psycho. Maggie's no, yeah, M Maggie's no longer a farm girl. She's like Laura <laughs> Croft. Maggie. Um, mm. And Abraham, my new favorite character on the entire series, is a big soft teddy bear. He's gonna probably die in a couple episodes. So <laughs> I think the softy's gonna I die. Think, yeah. Getting to Terminus was cool. The payoff wasn't that great for me, but I think that's the whole next season is about Terminus. I'm still not convinced they're cannibals. Everyone wants to go the cannibal route. I know we saw the bones and everything like that. And sorry, spoilers, but we're talking about the Walking Dead season finale. So, and I'll wrap up here soon. Um, so I don't think they're cannibals. I think one possible theory is they're slave traders or they deal in human commodities because everyone's in those cargo uh, mm. things. And they're they're really careful not to kill him. Uh, I think this could be leading up to the the whole Negan encounter because that's that's Negan's bag, man. He's he's trying to build a civilization. So I don't know. I'm anxious season. I love the line at the end. I wish I could have kept it to what the comics. Um, and saying that I'm now gonna can't remember what the comics did. There's that last thing that Rick did in the show. It's like they're gonna we're the wrong people to screw with. Yes, so they picked the throwing people to like poop around with he really pg version because in the comic something like they picked the wrong motherfucker i'm sorry yeah <gasps> wrong... but it was it was much more badass much more of a yeah feeling yeah um, yeah well the comic over is much more visceral i mean that much yeah and and they set it up that carl was gonna get shot and i love that they did that that there was that whole scene where like are they gonna kill carl like what are they doing here yeah. so i love how they played around with us that so those are my impressions. I honest, I was satisfied. I thought there'd be a bigger payoff about Terminus, but it's definitely going to keep me hooked for next season. What about you guys? Well, I think we all knew that they weren't going to wrap up Terminus in a way we appreciate. It was going. We knew it was going to be a cliffhanger. Every season's been kind of a cliffhanger, you know. Mm -hmm. So we knew that it, we they finally would reach Terminus, but something happened to make us go, "Oh crap!" You know, like right. this wasn't what it cracked is cracked up to be. I I, I agree. I don't, I think Cannibals would be too easy. And we kind of would expect easy, that, right. especially because of the Walking Dead video games of, from Telltale's. You know, Telltale mm -hmm. games had the, they they had that that twist in there already. <clears throat> so, I think that what I, 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 human trafficking is a good one, but I think maybe it might be something ritualistic, mm -hmm. or a lot simpler. They're keeping the people preserved so that they can use them as bait. When they go out in the field, they can use them as human bait and get supplies uh, while the zombies are distracted and munching on the live bait. That's a good and, one too, yeah. You know, that's why they, they're, they're making sure they don't kill them because the zombies are not attracted to dead flesh, rotting flesh. So, I just, well, I, if you go behind this, yeah, I mean, I just, like, like you said, I think it's too easy for cannibals. I think if the writers were in a room, they'd be like, what's happening at Terminus? I think the very first answer would be cannibals and they toss that out the window. It just seems like, just a cliche thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And they've been good about giving us some 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 uh, knuckleballs. I'm going to give a little yeah. call back there for Sean. Some knuckleballs, not curveballs. <laughs> some knuckleballs. Yeah. So I, I think it's. I, I think they're going to surprise us. I think they're on the right path. I'm glad that, that Rick is back and he's not a blubbering, you know, pansy anymore. Cause people were getting off Tim, Team Rick and, you know, Team Rick all the way. You know, who else are you going to follow in Apocalypse? Not those cr other crazy people. But uh, I, I think the T Mobile. Yeah, we know you. Be, you be throwing your friends behind you, like I'm gonna get away. No. <laughs> Obi wouldn't do that. He's an honorable gentleman. Mm. <laughs> I know I'd be dead. There'd be like a news report, like there might be zombies. I'd get like a shotgun to the face immediately. <laughs> what? But... Yogi, I'd save you though. Anyway, I mean, with this one, I kind of, me and my wife were talking throughout the, the season four, catching up to everybody, you know? And we we're talking and saying, well, how do you think it's going to go? How do you think, you know, we pretty much were getting it. We were kind of expecting it that way, to end that way, because we know there's another season coming. So we didn't, I don't know. I really, you guys really much, pretty much said it all. Actually, yeah, I don't really have anything new to say. No, I really you, didn't see you it. You have a good perspective, though, coming in from like someone who's just caught up. Like you've taken a lot of Walking Dead in because mm -hmm. we've like waited weeks, weeks. So when you got to Terminus, did it feel like the momentum kind of like? It yeah, it felt like it just it was just ninety miles an hour. Then all of a sudden, it, it blew its load and went limp. I mean, just that's just how it yeah. felt to me. My wife was like, "What? Is that really <laughs> yeah. done?" 
is it really done now? Yeah, well, there's another season right. coming out. Well, that was that was the last show. The last I don't even want to watch the fifth season. So I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm like, please, I want somebody to watch this. <laughs> you know, Obi's Obi's a scaredy cat. Okay, you know you get. Uh, you know, well, just, just tell you tell your wife, Obi. How else could it have ended? I mean, would would it have been satisfying if they got to terminus and everything was happy go lucky and there was no sense of tension, no no doubt that there, there was bad things going on? Everybody was like, "Hey, we're happy. Let's have a barbecue. Throw another shrimp in the barbecue. Yay! Woo woo! Ah, none of this is no good." Well, it used to be a time when, like, seasons of TV told a whole cohesive story where there was a beginning, middle, and end, and they, they could live in their own little universe. And that's why I want out of Walking Dead. But every time there's a season finale, it's like, it's everything that the season was building up to, it just kind of falls flat, like the prison confrontation. Oh, yeah, even, yeah, even after the first you... season. I mean, that, even at, at near the end of the first season. When they were yeah. in the, uh, you know, moving towards the, uh, what's that big building where they found out oh, the, the CDC professor? Center. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then that came to like, okay, we got to get the fuck out of here because it's going to blow up. Right. Really? That was, <sighs> you guys suck. Yeah, it just you get me into freaking shows that up. suck. <laughs> but that's the strength of it because you're really interested, right? Like leading up to that, you're really into it. That's well, no, can I not wait till season five starts? Definitely not. I'm, I'm, I've already got my freaking dvr set my wife's like that's my night not on this channel it's not no <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah we, we're still old school we can only do two shows at a time we can't do four or five yet you know that's cute that's we're not cute. up with the times my dvr only does two but so now yeah. predictions yeah. predictions guys we kind of talked about how the season four went how do we think season five is gonna go and people in chat, I want you guys to uh, pop out in here too. Uh, all games chat and even Twitch chat. Tell me how you guys think season five is going to start. Matt? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pimp this out for Matt real quick. Yogi? I know you guys had Lou Temple on, over at ZombieCast. And he was, yeah, that was Axel. That was a great show, dude. I, I just got a chance to hear the whole thing. And he that was provides... cool. Yeah, I like how him and uh, Matt Moak took over the show for a little while. Matt Moak over. It was great. Uh, the talking set. Uh, yeah, we just yeah. sat back and like, just go for it, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, they were just like completely engaging each other. Like they'd known each other for a long time, so it was cool. But it's great the way they compared. I think they did a really good job of discerning how zombies would be in real life, mm -hmm. realistically, and, and what makes sense, what kind of decisions make sense in a real framework. And then what makes sense for entertainment purposes? Because even in the chat right now, this is a backdrop for what you guys want to discuss. I know you have something to say, Matt. They're talking about how they would have liked the season finale to end. Like, you know, Stan is saying, Stan Farina is saying, to make the last episode perfect, they, they should have grabbed the one dude from Terminus and pull him into the train with him and rip him to pieces after he mocks them. You know, and then uh, someone else said uh, it would have been, it, it should have ended. Opti over from All Games also says, uh, should have ended with the blonde kidnapped girl on a table with her limbs being chopped off. So I guess some people are demanding more carnage. There wasn't enough carnage in that last episode, and we're kind of expecting that. But I think it was I think it was good for what it is for setting up season five. All right, so go on, Matt. What are you what are you thinking? I think Obi has a point here. Good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Stan in, in Twitch chat stated too, and then that would have been nice, especially if and still alive and you just cauterize the wounds. So then she's just, you know, no limbs, no nothing, just a body there with a head, and everything's good. She's still living. <laughs> and there's, hey, there's one of your bait. Your, you know, your bait for one of your... <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's, well, they've gotten dark before. Very dark. They get almost as dark well, as I get. I mean, that's pretty freaking... Woo! Midnight. Uh, predictions for season five, it's going to be Terminus for at least a few episodes because that dude who plays mm -hmm. the dude, I don't remember his name, he's been <laughs> cast. Like he, He's going he's gonna to be a regular, so it's something to do with Terminus. Um, I, I hope to God it's a Negan season. I hope that we find out Terminus isn't that bad. They just overreacted somehow and that Negan comes knocking on the door. I think they need to move into that territory because that, to me, is the best part of The Walking Dead is that character, Negan, who's the governor times a thousand. 
Um, <laughs> they need they need an evil per like they need a villain in that season. They mm-hmm. used to have like you don't have that person that the governor was great, but you don't have a threat anymore. Zombies aren't a, a huge threat for these guys right. anymore. They kind of they kind of treat them like bugs now. And if they get swarmed, that's that's one thing. But, but zombies in that show are just now like okay, we need to add zombies because things are getting a little boring. Let's throw them in. Um, so I think you need a, a human villain, and I think that's what we're going to see next season, like a new villain. That'd be interesting. Um, I, I think I agree, and we're gonna ca- we're gonna wrap this up because uh, everybody's demanding we move on to our feature discussion. I know Matt has to leave soon, so uh, what I'm gonna say first, they said uh, Stan Stan said he doesn't want uh, he, he said don't put the blonde in there because have you heard Beth sing? Yeah, we don't want any more of that. <laughs> I like she's cute. I like she her. is cute. <laughs> but uh <laughs> that's pretty much that's actually better than the way she sings. Uh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say I do agree they need a villain and they need a conflict, a big conflict that isn't zombies and that isn't uh infighting, and at least a villain that isn't this almost likable person no morally gray like someone that you just hate so much that no one's gonna be like oh i'm team whatever because even with the governor people were finding ways to justify well he went through a lot of bad stuff but, oh boohoo but he was still crazy you know the governor and shane I, I i just never could get on board with them they were bad guys no matter how you chop it up but anyway moving on so our feature discussion we're gonna this is inspired by stan farina and we've been plugging him a lot because he's gonna be uh doing some work f- with us, uh, collaborating over with us at uh, Geeky Antics. And, um, yeah, oh, big things Stan happen. with Geeky Antics? Oh, Stan. Was- again with it, yes. Because we're doing big things there. What do you mean That's again cool. with it? Are you not on board with the Geeky Antics? That's we've, just- said ge- we've said Geeky Antics as much as we've said all games. Oh. We give love to you both. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, is that, uh, I, I'm just wondering because Stan's in the chat there and I've been, I've been chatting with him. Is he from Geeky Antics? Is oh, that- yeah, he's part of our team. Yep. Oh, hi, Stan. How's it going? Matter of fact, there's a full team roster on there. You can see the bios of the people that are on there on, on our team. Uh, it'll be on the left-hand side of the site, geekyantics.net. You'll see all the people there, and there's a little page that shows you all the people that are in the gang. The gang. The but gang. Uh, this is the topic. This is our feature discussion for tonight, and hopefully we uh, can wrap this up before Matt has to leave. But it's a big one, a, a really big one I think we've all thought about and we can all talk about. When is mm-hmm. free? When is free to play really pay to win? So you know, there's a lot of free games out there, and they, you know, especially MMOs are going to a free to play model because let's face it, the the bus already left for you know monthly subscription rate, and I don't know why ESO has even gone into that route. I mean, we talked last week, World of Warcraft peaked at in 2010, and the MMOs have been going downhill as far as uh, you know the 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 onboarding rate, you know, and and how how committed people stay to those kind of games, and then you throw in a monthly rate. Mm. But then again, the flip side, uh, free to play isn't what it's cracked up to be. So let's dig into this because uh, specifically in Hearthstone, uh, Stan and Stan and a couple of people I introduced to the game said that. You know, Stan, actually, Stan's specific words, I like what he said. He said, he just writes me out in Hearthstone out of nowhere, and, and he goes, so Hearthstone is about money, dot, dot, dot. And I already knew he was frustrated just from reading that text. Yeah. But I don't think that's a pay-to-win game. So let's talk about what where is the line between, you know, the, the free, it's free to play, but obviously they need to make money. But when is that need to make money so overwhelming that it's clearly a pay-to-win game? I think Hearthstone. Uh, let me ask you a question about Hearthstone. If we were to start, if I were to start tomorrow with someone else who had never played that game before, and he came into the game with hundred dollars, and I came in with zero dollars, and he had full access to everything they sold in that game, could he have an advantage over me? Buying better cards, better systems. He'd have an advantage, but it's not a guaranteed win. I've, but that's the you, advantage is a pay to win. You're paying for the advantage to win. See, I disagree. That's so, yeah. Can we, let, 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 me, let me give you a definition of pay to win and see if you guys agree with it first. Okay. I I say pay to win in its purest sense is when the only way you can be competitive in the game, whether it's on a casual or hardcore basis, because I believe you can be competitive in the and, and be a casual player. 
you still be passionate about it, but you're just not really hardcore. Like, that's not the only thing you do and you dedicate your life to, right? But you still want to compete. You still want to rise up the ranks. You still want to be able to win and increase your chances of winning, right? That's fair. So I think a pure pay-to-win scenario is one where the only way you can remain competitive is if you pay money. So in order for a game to say it's truly free-to-play, it needs to have some sort of balancing where free-to-play player, the people that stick to the free model, have a chance to beat the people that do invest money, especially the ones that invest a lot of money. But do they have a chance? Because we're talking about time commitment as well here. Obi? Uh, oh, so you're making the argument of time commitment as, as a form of currency. Because, well, because you just, you, I mean, part of your pay-to-win definition is, um, uh, I'm trying to back up. You're, it's, it's not, pay, it's paying for the advantage, it's paying to keep, stay competitive. My argument is that to stay competitive in a lot of these games, you have to buy those advantages or else you're going to be falling behind a lot of these other players who can pay for those advantages. If I'm just going to grind it out for those things, like say there's a suit of armor or there's a special gun in Battlefield 4, you can buy it here or you can grind it out for a week and get it. By the mm-hmm. time I get through that week, that other person's bought another gun. So that that variance in uh, advantages, it, it completely throws off the game. It's It's not a fair arena anymore. You can say that, yeah, I still have the opportunity to play the game and get the exact same things, but when you give people a chance to buy advancements and, and speed up their time, their game time, I think it, it completely offsets the balance. Now tell me, wait, tell me, now tell me one game mm-hmm. and think hard because I can't think of any. Tell me one game mm-hmm. that is absolutely free to play to where you can't buy anything extra or new Sorry, or bigger. That? Ask one game that you can think of that you've ever played in your whole life, or you've ever yeah. heard about, that you can't buy extra stuff or pay to pay pay to win. How's that? Halo Three, Halo Three. That was, but seriously, you know, like Halo Halo Three or before pay to win came in, multiplayer games were the more you played, the more stuff you got. So the mm-hmm. people who had the best stuff were the people who put in the time, not the money. Right. And to well, me, that's. Yeah. And, and this is kind of like Hearthstone, and if you guys you guys know me, I, we, yeah. me and both Yogi play uh, War Thunder. War Thunder is the same exact way. You can start from level one, and you have your level one planes, and, and just do the countless hours and hours and hours of grinding the points, mm-hmm. or you can say, hey, I'm just going to stick $50 on my account. Oh, I can go buy that plane just because I paid some money because you get a free gift. And mm-hmm. then so you get the best plane in that tier, no matter what. So people right. that are just starting out, if you're starting out and I'm starting out, well, I threw $50 on my account. Guess what? I got a freaking Mark One, same plane as you did, but I have all the armor, all the bullets. I can rip you to shreds. Right. It's and really not fair. Faster. But, yeah, it's, yeah. It, but it, it, you can't really say that, yes, if you don't want to put money to a game, Yes, that's fine. That's your prerogative. It is a free to play. You can play for free, regardless. Mm-hmm. But those are the people. That, I mean, you can't be mad at somebody that actually wants to actually spend actual real money on a video game when it's supposed to be free to play. I can't be mad at them. No, that's absolutely their choice. But you can't I say can't that it's not fair either, because they're choosing to make that commitment right. where you're not. Well, the choosing to spend money isn't a commitment. It's I have. It is a commitment. Can... No, it's not. <laughs> it is a commitment. If you choose to spend money anywhere, you're committing this to whatever you're doing, even if it's to buy a pack of cigarettes or to buy a a a, a, a bottle of Mountain Dew. Right. Yeah. By that definition, commitment is I'm invested in this game financially. Mm-hmm. But my version of commitment is I'm invested in this game in terms of skill, building my skill, getting to that level. Right. Honestly. Um, right. Well, and, and that's, I think that's where the difference is. And that's where the like the MMOs and all the other stuff come in because then you actually start from level one. You can't buy a, a set of gear unless you do it illegally. Uh, you have to actually grind up, you know, through Diablo, World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Hearthstone, you can get packs and stuff, but you're not getting any one card. You can't just sit there what through about... a deck of cards and say, I want this card, this card, and this card, and I'll buy them. You can't do that. It's got to be packs. And you might get lucky. You might get the rarest card in the game. It's just because you opened 100 packs doesn't mean 
I guarantee you, Yogi, I've seen the game. Yogi has got into a level five. I think it was a warlock before he really fell in love with him. He was level five. The guy he was playing against was some odd reason was like level 20 or 15 or 16. He smoked his ass. It doesn't matter about the cards. It's how you play the game, how you strategize the win. Because if you can start out with your cards, yes, it is the luck of the draw. But if you play your cards right, that's how you win. You don't win just because, oh, because you can only have two, like two, like board clearing, say, let's say, like an incinerate. You can only have two of those. You know, or... Uh, well, horseplay might be the exception to the rule that I haven't played it. But from what you're talking about, that seems to be a great, fine balance where if I can come right. in and be someone who's spent money, and I'm totally for that. And going back to your point, I mean, it absolutely is your choice if you want to spend money in game. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm about. My thing is, I'm more, mad's the wrong word. I'm more just pissed off. <laughs> pissed off, not a better <laughs> word. I'm just, I'm, I'm frustrated. I don't like how that's, that, fr I'm frustrated how developers are setting up this and not, they're setting up this arena where it is possible. Take a guy like me, you know, like I, I and, and we're, we're all in the same boat. Like we have our commitments, we have our bills and stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't have as much discretionary income as I had when I was a teenager or mm -hmm. when I was in my 20s. So if I'm going to get a game Amen like to that, that. Yeah. If I'm going to get a game like uh, Battlefield 4, and I'm just mm -hmm. picking on that one, um, I'm, I'm probably not going to spend money. So mm -hmm. immediately I'm at a disadvantage because I'm going to be facing not kids, but people with more discretionary income that are more committed and putting more money into that. So for, for me entering that, that's not a fair situation for me. And it's not their, it's not their fault. It's the developer for setting up that ability for people to advance because they have the capacity to do it. <laughs> well, and I'm going to find it. Okay. And what I was reading on it, there's quite a few forums on, on Blizzard and there's some, some independent forums that I was reading on the game itself. Hearthstone and well, Blizzard's actually trying to do when they do like a ranked game or even the normal games, they're trying to do a matchmaking to where they actually can see your account without seeing it kind of thing. To where if you have a bunch of epic cards and you have a bunch of rares and some, you know, some legendary cards, they're not going to put you in with a level one that's just starting the game. That, that's per, that's that's what I want to um, see. I want to see more consideration for that. Now, I, I, I like I said, it's it's it's. Yeah. I'll have to find it again just so I can, you know, because I don't want to say something and it not be true. Cause it's, but if they will do it that way with the matchmaking, um, kind of like how they do it in League of Legends or, or anything else with even even the 3v3 arena and, and regular World of Warcraft, how they actually, you have to have the rating, a rating to fight those tier top teams. So you have to have the rating or the basically the cards when you start out. If you have a bunch of epic cards... And you're, you know, you have a, you know, a shaman deck all decked out. You have the best of the best cards. You have the best of the best everything. You're not going to go against a level one guy that just started the damn game yesterday. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, I hope they, they build more into that, into the matchmaking value of it. Because if they do, I guarantee this game will f pop off much more. Because it's, it's a game you can play on your fucking phone. Absolutely, and it, it sounds like that's the kind of game I'd like to get involved in. Absolutely, because um, I, I think a lot of other games abuse that, but it sounds like Hearthstone's on the right track, and I might actually be more interested in it now. Because mm -hmm. my my impression of Hearthstone is, you know, I I just don't. I'm spending money on all different types of games. I just don't have time or money to do that for another game. But I do want to try Hearthstone, you know. And you know what? What what's so wrong with like it used to be. What was so wrong with multiplayer where you didn't have stuff to, that you just actually earned it through playing? It was not wrong for players. Players didn't mind that. There was no people going, I wish I could fast it's, track this. But you always have that one person, okay, that you have, say, okay, like with me and Yogi, we started a, a, a game tryout with Armada Online. And we were thinking, you know, okay, we're going to play this a little bit before we have him on the show. And then he came on the show, and we're like, oh, yeah, this would be cool if we could do this and this and this. And there's always one person that say, well, hey, can I just buy all the ships and then just play them that way? See, I'd argue they're not really gamers. <laughs> I yeah, mean, they're, they're, they're people hard. that want to spend money to have the best of the best things. They're not gamers. But I'm telling you that right now. If you do that, yeah. if you do that yeah. there's no disrespect to you whatsoever, to anybody. But if you do do that... I'm going to call you out right now. You are not a real gamer. 
I'm sorry to say that. If you don't spend the time and actually playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, I'll dog you out every day. You are not a gamer. Prove me wrong. That sounds harsh, but I would I would agree with that. that the point of playing a game to me, and as we all grew up with the point of playing a game, was if there was something that was really rare, we worked our asses off for it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm making this to be like a weird romantic version, but like, you know, like we worked for the stuff in our game. That was part of the fun of a game was there's this thing I could work towards and I might get it one day if I'm good enough. Um, and that's what, you know, that, that bled into your life as well. It, it taught you that there's stuff that you work for. But now, if you have games where you can just jump right to the top with all the best equipment, what's the fun in that? That That's not fun to me. It's almost like cheating, you know? It's like cheating. What's the point of cheating in the game? You're not really earning anything, you know? It's like right. people that cheat in MMOs. It's like, I'm cheating so I could uh, have the best stuff, but you didn't earn it. What's the feeling of satisfaction in that? But see, yeah. I think that the more important discussion here, and, and, and I want to address some of the stuff that Stan has been discussing with me and also in the chat. Uh, we're actually going to go more in depth in this on the show that we were talking about that's going to come up where we're going to de dig deep into game theory and get and cover all the facts. And we don't obviously we don't have the in a two hour period. We don't have enough time to do that. And we're getting close to the two hour mark. But, uh, hmm. you know, um, already the thing about it is the I think the thing that you have to look at there is um, it's good to have the option to, to pay to win to fast track, because especially if you're joining a game like. Uh, Hearthstone that's very skill based mm -hmm. late in the game and people are so much <laughs> further ahead of, ahead of you. Yeah, matchmaking is good and they do have NPC battles so you don't have to be forced into the PvP scenario. They got rid of some of the bot battles and they're going to bring that back with adventure mode and whatnot. But And they also have practice mode so you could do that as well. Um, but you know, in a PvP scenario, it's good to have things to be a, a, as close as possible. Um, if you look at Battlefield 4, which you mentioned a lot, Matt, the yeah. stuff you get in those kind of games, is, it's such a massive scale. It's really hard to balance the game the bigger the scale. What they do is all those things give you very slight edge. So it still does come down to skill and and kind of the taking advantage of opportunity, the element of surprise, right? Mm -hmm. And Hearthstone is very much about skill. I don't consider it a pay-to-win game because, yes, you could pay to win to fast-track your progress, but it is not an automatic. You don't have to pay to ha to be able to be competitive, and that's what I consider true pay to win. Because pay to win to me has a connotation of the only way this game is good is if you pump lots of time into it, lots of money into it. Because really, yeah. time is a currency too. I agree. You know, yes, you should, gamers should have the balls to grind and earn stuff. But sometimes there's something to be said to be able to pick up a game whenever you want. And compete and have fun with it, and, and just based on skill, have a shot to win. Because sometimes, you know, especially us that we're getting older, we have families, we don't have time to dedicate to hundreds of hours into one single game. You know, hundreds of dollars, yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you know, and and then if we if we do have time to invest into one game, we may want to spread. We have, we want a buffet. We want to try out different games. No matter how much we might love one game, there's lots of different things we want to play as well to switch it up. So. You know, I think that's the kind of decision you have to make. Do you want to grind a lot or do you want to fast track yourself? You know, but I don't I don't get that sense like I need to grind to get better cards. I might lose some matches and then say, oh, you know, if I had that card, I would definitely do better with this deck that I'm trying to build here. But like Obi said, I see people pull out legendaries. I don't even have one legendary yet. I don't think so. And I'm, I'm beating people with that. I'm whipping out like three or four legendaries in one match. You know, well, you played against me. I suck. You played with me <laughs> against me on every character I have. I suck. And I continuously get people that just you pull out a legendary or all every one of their cards is rare. Right. Okay, I'll try to beat you or even hit you because you're going to have 20 minions out at all times. We can't have that many, but still, there's no way I can do anything because all your cards just outscale mine to, as in whole. Right. <laughs> And that's that's frustrating. That that can turn a lot of people off if they're just starting out. I don't know. I mean, I I think I fundamentally I just I grew up playing games where when I bought the game, that's the only amount of money I'm ever going to spend on that game, and I got every single thing that game had to offer, and I was on equal footing with everyone as long as I had the commitment and I wanted to be. I could be the greatest person in any multiplayer game, 
as long as I put on the time. I don't feel that's the sense anymore. I feel if I'm going to get into a multiplayer game, I've got to probably pay something down the road. Or, and you got to admit, EA is worse for this. It makes it so that if you don't pay, you're going to be grinding a ton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. They they put up a lot of barriers. They stretch things out a lot. And they're like, but you could pay to fast track this process. So they really funnel people into the pay decision. And that's what frustrates me is that developers are really – I just downloaded the new Family Guy app for iOS. It's like Simpsons tapped out. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I know. I'm going to get addicted to it. It's brutal, though. Like, they immediately, right after the bat, they're like, hey, you having fun? Here's like a 10-hour task that's uh, it's going yeah. to bring your – Game to okay. a standstill. Stop right there, Matt. See, that's yeah. a, that's exactly the point I was trying to get at, too. Yeah. I believe that a true pay-to-win game, a game that's truly about the money. I mean, they all want to make money, ultimately. I mean, it's not, there's no lying about that. Now, first, yeah. two, two points you brought up that are really good. First one, games that you pay for up front, full retail price, and then they have microtransactions to support it further, they could yeah. go fuck themselves. That's, that's stupid. Choose one or the other, or at least subsidize the price of the game, the initial investment through the microtransaction. Like, make it a 20 or $30 game, not a $60 game, for Pete's sake. But uh, I don't know what Canadian prices are. You can convert that later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the other thing okay. is a, a paywall, right? A paywall is a nasty thing. When you, when right off the bat, Especially if it happens early, like if it happens really early on, maybe not right off the bat, but if it happens early on in experience, or or just after you get hooked in, and you're like, this is a great game, and, the, and they know they know when that sweet spot's gonna be when you're gonna be hooked, and they say you're enjoying yourself. Well, guess what? You can't really go anywhere else unless you pay money, or if you want to, you can spend a hundred years and grow a, a really yeah. massive beard, and you, and you'll get the same thing, you know. <laughs> that's exactly it, and I think I think that's the danger. There's people like Blizzard that are doing it honestly. But there's developers that are like they're, they're taking this trend and really kind of perversing it and, and really making it so that even if you buy a sixty nine dollar game, um, you're not gonna enjoy it as much unless you spent almost double that. Yeah, yeah. That's that that's see that's exactly what I feel like. That's the real pay yeah. to win. That's the real pay to win sin right there. It's just pay to win game. sin. <laughs> it's like, like a tongue twister. But uh, whistle. hell yeah, yo, throwing your bank <laughs> shots, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think Hearthstone. I mean, it could use some balancing, and definitely they need to bring back the single player elements where you could get, get gain your bearings. But I really recommend like someone jumps into it, get keep an open mind, play with some friends, and and so they can walk you through some of the things that you might be doing wrong, because it is mm-hmm. I, I believe a fun game like you like you said should ultimately be about everything as equal as possible, and ultimately it comes down to the player skill. It yeah. shouldn't be like. Oh, I I spent one k and and I got this epic drop that makes me invincible and I automatically win. No, you know, and and, 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 and if that's and what you do, that. if that's what you do, like Obi said, like really consider why you're playing this game, consider what you're getting out of it. Because I'll tell you this much: if you're doing it to impress people online, it's not working. If you're doing it to like win some kind of virtual contest, it's not working. You got to ask yourself: why are you playing a game if you're just spending money to? get past the actual playing parts of it, right? And you know what? Assassin's Creed, it's funny. Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, uh, they had this thing where you could pay to, like, reveal all the locations of the collectibles, uh, and you could, like, pay to, like, just... uh, Something stupid, like, it's, like, 99 cents to reveal all the treasure maps on a certain, like, island. I'm just like, (laughs) is this what we've come to? This is ridiculous. Uh, That's crazy. Why are you playing this game, then? Like, what's what's the... What's the point for you to play this game if you're just... Is it just to collect virtual... I don't know. It, it baffles my mind, the thinking behind some of these microtransactions. I, I did like... I'm sorry, Obi. Go ahead. What did you say? Oh, so I, I did like one game that did that. Mass Effect 3, the multiplayer. I actually really enjoy it. And um, mm. I, I've more than felt... I mean, with the, the campaign alone, I got my money's worth, even though the ending was a little... Eh. But... Uh, <laughs> Oh, you're so, one of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it didn't. In the end, it didn't feel like your choices meant anything, you know. Uh, it, it was like Bioshock Infinite, where they just drop, they drilled it into you. Choices do not matter. In the end, your choices do not matter. Every, you know, everything that happens the way it's gonna happen. You know, that's kind of the theme of that game. And let's not get into the, the game, yeah. yeah, let's not get into the whole uh, you know atheist uh, t- themes and whatnot. But anyway, <laughs> but uh. 
you know, the, the thing about Mass Effect 3, it has the microtransactions, but they are super generous with the stuff you get, the rewards you get after every single match or every two or three matches. So it never feels like a grind because you're getting that instant gratification. And that's ultimately what happens with when there's microtransactions available. They know that people are going to pull a trigger because we want instant gratification. If we don't get, get that immediate feedback, that's like a very, very fundamental theme in game design is, is the feedback and that kind of like that instant gratification where the player feels they get a sense and, and, a, and a, a notification of their progress and that they're, do, they're on the right path and they're doing good things, you know, achievements, trophies, you know, a ding on a radar, you know, something <laughs> right, shining, yeah. you know, there's all these Every things you seconds. get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and the thing is we've gotten so spoiled as a society that everything needs to be faster and, 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 and bigger and better that when we don't get that, it's like, we're, we feel disappointed and we, and we start judging things more harsh, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that's part of it too, but I, I don't see that Stan, in Hearthstone. Stan makes a good point. I remember in Zelda 20 years ago where it took a week or more to figure something out. Most big gamers <laughs> wouldn't put up with that today. That's oh, true. Yeah. I mean, you imagine Zel- Zelda, and I'm surprised Nintendo has done this. Zelda would be now like, hey, do you want to go through this forest or pay $5 for a special uh, <laughs> ocarina that transports you to the dungeon immediately? You know, I, I would, if I saw that, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I remember I just I actually figured out the the, the lost forest uh, as a fluke, and then I just said well, maybe as a pattern I have to go up and then down and left and then right, right, you know, and then I finally got the pattern down, you know, but uh, back then information didn't travel as fast. When you did get tips from someone, it was maybe uh, through a water cooler conversation, you know. Yeah. Or in a class or whatever, wherever you were at that age. You know? Ninten- Nintendo Hotline or Nintendo Power. Or oh, we got a Nintendo Hotline, but I mean, <laughs> that was paid service. Yeah. You know, or you might have. Oh, man. Power. Maybe I was paying to win before microtransactions. So See, I totally phone Nintendo. So it, it always existed. <laughs> ah, I just Think about it. Secret. Nintendo Power, actually, that's a very, it's a good point because Nintendo Power used to have the, the, the fold out maps with all the locations of all the loot. And they used to have the little cheat section, and then you had a uh, like these quarterly cheat books they used to send you, right. with all yeah. the codes and everything. So that stuff has always existed. There was always a premium attached to it, but now it's like the thing is, it, now it's worse because those microtransactions are so small they're negligible. They're oh, only a dollar, only two dollars. But if you do that fifty times, it adds up. You do that a hundred times, it adds up. You know, but it's because we inherently. Yeah, unless it's a really bad paywall, like we mentioned earlier, we inherently just have a need to, like, uh, just, like, uh, you know, get that instant gratification. But anyway, we're running close to the to the second hour. Where we got to wrap this up. Uh, Matt, you going to stick around for the for the full thing? Might as well. I think we got, like, five, five minutes? Ten minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go, guys. I can't stick around for the other stuff. Only five minutes. Well, yeah, but it's five minutes with you. Ooh. All right. So... <laughs> He's Again, gonna, he's gonna make me change the cameras five minutes of the show. Thanks. No, he's 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 just busting your chops. <laughs> but um, we will be talking about this. That's that. You know, there's a lot of good stuff there. I think we're gonna be revisiting that topic a lot and, and a lot of t- tangents there. Uh, we were gonna talk about esports and talk about how golf is not a sport. All I'm gonna say on that is that I like playing golf, so I hope I wasn't trying to offend. But watching golf as a sport is about as fun as watching paint dry. I'm sorry. And you know what pissing me about golf? To me, it's just an excuse for people to show off how much money they have to spend. It's like, I bought all this land, and you know what I built? A golf course. <laughs> I just, That's what I'm going to do. Just, after, yeah. after my wife builds me my gaming house, and we have our twelve to 15,000 square foot house ourselves, I'm going to build a fucking golf course too. And then when you come up to, to or come down, because I'm probably going to be living in Hawaii by then, when you come over to play <laughs> golf, Yogi, I'm going to go, Yogi Zilla, Yomar, what's going on, brother? Get the fuck off my course. Oh. Why don't you turn that into a paintball course? <laughs> yeah, see, paint, by all now, the paintball, hell yeah, definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't let you in anyway, Yogi. No. You, no. You go on there paintball. anyways. Oh, we got, you hey, we got to, you see Matt, you see Matt, he's like, awesome. come on, guys. We got paintball, go to a paintball field. <laughs> Use far less land. It's a more, lot more fun and much more cost effective. If I'm gonna do paintball. I'm just gonna do aerosol, like paintball. Yeah, 
airsoft to get. Mm -hmm. I like paintball just because with paintball you have to tune your your markers just right to get that and and account for win variants. You get I don't know. There's a lot of nice things about it. And since we get lucky and a paintball bounces off you because someone doesn't have the, paintball, the marker. Paintball, airsoft, paintball, airsoft. Paintball. I know. They both hurt, but yeah. Airsoft yeah. hurts worse. Yeah, that's why you like it. <laughs> I know. Okay. But anyway, uh, so that's that on that. And uh, I can't wait for the Masters week to be done so I can get my town back. <laughs> So this week, this week on, t on deals for cheap bastards, we don't have much. Uh, just check out. Make There's people out there that don't know what Steam is. If you are a PC gamer or you're at, at all interested in playing games on the, P on the PC, download Steam for Pete's sake. Google it. And they got games on sale all the time, and they got. Don't play any of them, but just download them anyways. Sure, I mean if you pay a dollar, you can. You know, it's not bad. I mean, you, 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 people pay sixty dollars for games they don't play. So why not just get a dollar? That's true. Game? <laughs> not me, man. <laughs> Make sure I play. Yeah, I'm sure every gamer out there has some games that they may have taken out of the and, and loaded in once or twice and they never revisited on the console. Just saying. And not just on Steam, but Steam, you definitely get a massive collection going. But yeah, they have, they have Steam free to play weekends when the games go for free for that weekend. You can test them out and then they do major reduction on that. So check that out. And uh, yeah, we're not going to do the dust off this week again. We're skipping it. We want to make sure we stay under two hours because we are over our all games. I think it's time to do some plugs, right, Obi? That's fault. Shameless plugs. Mm -hmm. Guys, mm -hmm. this is the... Okay. Yeah, it's always your fault. This is the time where we actually give some shout-outs to our our, our... 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 Our friends. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I've lost my spot and my cl window closed. So, um, right. basically, so we want... Do it? You want me to do it? Go ahead, man. <laughs> you said you lost your spot. I'm here. Okay, so anyway. All right, go ahead, go ahead, Obi. Go ahead, Obi. You got it. <laughs> Again. All right, I will do it. Horseplay will now be syndicated over at allgames.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. We don't Eastern time. i just reading. So stay tuned as we, uh, we do dry runs <laughs> to see how everything's going to work out with the network. Please give us, you know, give us some time to get everything set up. We will have it all set up, so we are over there with you. Please show some love by supporting the site and hanging out and on our uh, IRC, our chat with us, uh, just to talk. We are on Stitcher. We are on TuneIn Radio, BlackBerry, Windows, forward slash Zune, and iTunes, guys. So you guys can check us all there. Leave us some reviews on our iTunes and our talk shoe and Stitcher. It really does. It helps us out more than you guys think. It really does. So more listeners means a bigger promotions, giveaways, etc. Giveaways, you guys, we're actually doing a lot of our giveaways on the network, which is right down if you guys want to point downwards on the bottom of your screen if you guys are watching. But if you're not watching, all our network is geekyantics.wordpress.net. It's not .com anymore. It is .net. But you guys can check us out there. And also, leave us a voicemail right up top above Matto and Yogi's head, 206-415-4987. That voicemail again, 206-415-4987. You guys can give us a, give us a shout-out. Do whatever you guys wanted to. We'll try to – Jesus. We'll try to play it out on uh, – over <laughs> – <laughs> facial expressions are killing me. All radio. All radio. <laughs> All music was provided by Technoax, that is Techno with a K, and he is on YouTube, technoax.com. Go check that out. He has lots of good music to uh, to hear. If you guys all highlight videos and audio cast, the uncut versions of Horseplay, which are mostly the funniest, are available on right here at Obi-Wan-X2 on Twitch, Yogizilla's channel at Yogizilla, Twitch TV, and... Um, Currently, right now, on Yobi, Yobi, Yogi Zilla's YouTube page, www.youtube.com forward slash Yogi Zilla. You guys can catch that out. A lot of the audio. We do want to make sure that we give shout outs and want you guys to check out our friends at Gaming History 101, Sega Nerds, the Gaming of the Shrew, which were formerly Sega Ad Addicts, Com Com Castuberus, Doctor Who Pack podcast orange lounge radio r9 cast knuckleballer radio of course zombie cast agents of the shield the party chat 
and the B Team Podcast, and all these guys are all on allgames.com. So you guys can go check us out there at All Games Agents of Shield Podcast. Sorry about that. And we just want to make sure that you guys go check us all out. It's all right there, and you guys can check us out again on our. You can, he keeps changing the the words around. You guys can't check us out at geekyandex.wordpress.net. Not me. Net, dude, stop. I'm trying to get out of here. He's trying. <laughs> Your sister cast and your mama cast. But there are tons of blogs, guys. If you guys want to be involved in those blogs, you guys can go right to the geekyantics.wordpress.net and just start something up. We will get involved. Um, myself, Yogi, I think Matt's going to be putting one on here later this week because he won't leave the chat alone, so he's going to have to. You guys can check out that. <laughs> respond. We'll respond back. So mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that you guys uh, really appreciate those that are listening on the podcast and those that are watching us live. This is Horseplay. We do want to make sure that you guys. Okay, we're not done yet. Yogi yes. has one more thing before we get yes, out of here. Yes, yes, We did not forget about the voicemails. We will play them. We're gonna have a nice stockpile of them. But keep come, keep keep bringing them in. What we want to do when we play, we want to be actually have a time to respond to them. So mm -hmm. when we don't have guests, it's probably the best time. We'll have voicemails. We'll have call-ins. No, that's not a bad thing to say. The the voicemails are mainly for when we want to have a little extra filler and extra discussion points. You know. We don't want them to supersede our time with the guests because their time, we, we appreciate the time of our guests. We also appreciate your, your voicemail, so keep them coming. That's all I want to say. 206 415 Go ahead, Obi. Close. Take us out. Take us out. Once again, this is Obi1X2 right here. My cohort, Yogi Zilla, and our special guest, special guest, Matt o. McFly, <laughs> Mr. Matthew Bradford. Thanks for joining us, sir. We'll see you guys. My pleasure next week peace peace out, peace. out.